What's happening out there? You tuned into the NB Online podcast. You're rocking with your host, Son of a Jones. And his partner, the genius Pinky. <laughs> Let's take over the world. Azar <laughs> <Azar> Johnson. <laughs> Real quick, man. Partner for the absence I was dealing with, with some health issues, mm -hmm. mainly dental. So my little advice out there, if you have some dental problems, take care of them. I messed around and I found out. Lord mercy. <laughs> So with the podcast, episode 27, before we get into the crux of our discussion and talking hip hop, sports, mm -hmm. and even some current events, we mm -hmm. just got the news a few hours ago that a hip hop pioneer, a hip hop legend from New York, from Brooklyn, passed away. Mm -hmm. So we definitely, from our platform, want to give a condolences to his family and friends and people who really know him. Rest in peace to Mr. C. On your end, what do you want to want to say towards that when you heard the news um you know it's sad of course you know one of the vets in the game um growing up listening to um dj mr c um i think he doesn't get enough amongst all the other things that you hear he doesn't get enough credit for you know being biggie's dj and helping biggie get to where he got to um he also helped promote a lot of businesses and brands um he was he 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 kind of was a dj like flex was like he could transcend through every era. Like he's he's still from the era like I listen to, and then he's also with today's era. He can still mix it. I don't know if you know he he's on shade four or five, um. Well, he was you know every night from I think I want to say because I think oh, what's his name Torre was was after him. I think now Torre's before him, so I think he's now Torre's earlier now he's later. So it's Mr. C is like literally like I think between ten and eleven if I'm not mistaken. Mr. C is, you know, definitely a dope DJ. He's the epitome of a DJ. Um, remember when we did the salute to the DJs, we couldn't name everybody. So he's definitely in that that list. You know, the DJs that I talk about, you know, like Premier and uh, Flex and uh, doo and all of them. Like, he's, he's put down a lot of great music and done a lot of great DJing over the years. And I, I think amongst other things for what I, he should be known and respected for is definitely his skills on the, on the turntables. Most definitely. And one thing to highlight, because you would be able to tell me better than I could. Um, didn't he have a mixtape where he was pretty much promoting big at that time in yeah. the 90s? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Junior Mafia? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he did the... Uh, I think the freestyle that Big did when we were on Death Row Beats, I think that was C, Mr. C. <laughs> Definitely think it was. Mr. C had mixtapes. He did. He did. He used to get, for, for my Brooklyn heads and my New York heads, if you you know about Beat Street, you know, I mean, we go to Beat Street, Mr. C had mixtapes all up in that place. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, definitely. Mr. C did his thing. Um, salute to him. Um, sad to see that he's he's no longer with us. At a young you know? age. Yeah. Because he was, what, 57? Yeah, 56 or 57, yeah, but yeah, to me, that's way that's too young. young. Yeah, you know, my grandmother passed, she was like 83, you know, so it's just to see him going out that soon is crazy. Definitely hip-hop loss, mm -hmm. loss, of, loss of peace. Mm -hmm. So, again, condolences to his family and friends and people who really showed him real love, mm -hmm. and I'll just leave that at that. Facts. So getting back to our hip hop discussion that we always continue on our platform, mm -hmm. we're still within the 50th year of hip hop. And what we do every podcast is we get flowers to either DJs, producers, hip hop artists, somebody important within hip hop culture. Mm -hmm. So this episode we talked and we discussed, we want to stick with a specific DJ. She, oh, no, DJ. my bad, my bad. Yeah, Let me correct myself. <laughs> a specific <laughs> MC. Uh -huh. From Jersey, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. She's from Jersey. I'm going to throw you the alley-oop, and I want you to slam dunk it, man. <laughs> okay. So, so, coming from Jersey, lead the way. Coming from New Jersey, um, wanted to highlight Rod Dicker. Mm -hmm. I think uh, birth name Rashida. <laughs> you know I'm saying? So, um, long story short, I, I think that, because, you know, we haven't really been around because we've been doing so much with the sports and everything and then you was dealing with the health issue but we we really didn't get to chime in on women's history month especially talking about the female contribution to hip-hop i think rod digger the reason why I, I pointed her out out of everybody and i know no disrespect to the vets like roxanne shantae salt and pepper queen latifah Moni love no disrespect to them 
the reason why with Rod Digger, I love what she stood for and I loved everything that she did. You know, I we've heard the story a million times about how she was found, so I'm not even going to bring that part of the story up. But I think that for me, when I first heard Rod Digger, I heard her on the Fuji's The Score album, which went multi-platinum, and she was on Cowboys. So I don't know if anybody, you know, most people, a lot of people from the era knows that song. But, you know, with the Killing Me Softly and all that, that was my introduction to Rod Digger. Like, that, that's when I found out who she was. And for people that don't know, I know a lot of people dream about getting on the mic with Lauryn Hill. She was the only one that got on the mic with Lauryn Hill and went word for word with her. And she didn't sound off beat. She didn't sound off track. She didn't look like, like, like. Bring that back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bring that back as far as she, MCs in general. She's to the Robert only Lowe. female that's been on a track with Lauryn Hill and she didn't skip a beat. She held her, she held her mic well. So I'm saying that. I know a lot of, a lot of female MCs saying, yo, I could have got on there and got, no, you couldn't have. Like she was on that track. She, she, she was lethal on the track. She stood out in the track. So, and, and, let, me, go and let me say, I'm not firing shots. I think Rod Digger is a very beautiful woman, but I think also, unlike today's artists, she didn't her you saw her mic skills before you saw you, you kind of respected her mic skills more than anything. You get what I'm saying? She didn't mm-hmm. have to do what, what other artists are doing right now. But go ahead, I'm sorry. We're gonna ask. Oh me? no, just going back to her being on the track with Lauren Hill. Mm-hmm. So who got the better of of each other on the track? <laughs> oh, here you go. Well, it was kind of like they were complimenting each other going back and forth. So I I I love uh I, I, no, I, I like Digger and I no, I, I like Digger. Digger's verse mm-hmm. was better. That's why she caught my eye. I was like, who's this who's this girl rapping with Lauren Hill? And she was like, you know, they came out the 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 cause it's like an old school like cowboy type thing. So they came out of the whatever that the carriage or whatever and they they started going back and forth, like how smooth a hustler and trigger go in broken language. So they was just going back and forth. But that was, that was the, actually was the, her crew, the outsiders. That's what it really was, is the Fuji's and the outsiders. But the outsiders were on that track, and everybody raised, blazed the track, even from Young Z to Pace One to John Forte. They all did it. But Rod Digger, to me, stood out. She, that's hard to do in a group, group effort like that. The, to give Especially the, during that time period of the '90s that we always talk about. To give it, give it. It's funny how now I'm saying this to kind of give you an idea for people that don't know. If you ever heard the classic track with Scenario, with Tribe Called Quest and Leaders in the New School, they all have five tracks. There wasn't one whack verse on the on the album. I mean, on the song, but Busted Rhymes, Busted Rhymes track stood out. stood out. It just it just stood out at everybody, right? That's what Rod Digger did on Cowboys. That's the best place I can put That's it. That's a hell of a statement. Yeah, yeah. So. I think she and probably people are going to disagree, but I don't care. You know what I'm saying? Let me say this. And then when she moved on, I, th- I think, because I, my timeline is kind of funny, but the next time I saw her was with the Flip Mode Squad. And I think when, once when she did with the Flip Mode Squad, she always was kind of doing a thing. on. I, I think every song I heard her on, she was, she was killing the track. You know what I'm saying? She always stood on the track. If you hear cha-cha-cha-cha-cha, Everybody loves that part of when she's she's yelling her verse, when she's yelling her name. So you know she's you know um, if you go listen to Flip Mode's Flip Mode's album, first album, she stands out on it. You get what I'm saying? She was kind of how can I put it? Because they were all ill. Um, Lord of Mercy, um, Baby Sham, uh, you know Buster Spliff. But when I when the Flip Mode Squad came. My best way to put it is like with Bust On Leaders in the New School album, whether it was Sticky Fingers on Onyx album, when it was Rod Digger on that album with a group of men, she stood out. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's hard to do. She wasn't out there flashing and doing model shoots and all that, which is nothing wrong with that. I keep saying that. But you just knew who she was on the mic. You get what I'm saying? You knew who she was on the mic. You knew she was writing her rhymes. You knew who she was lyrically. You just, you just... I can't describe in words. Like she was, let me put it to you this way. Like she, you just anticipated her verse. And I think the sad part about it, and it's not a diss at Buster anybody. I think the sad part, in my opinion, she never reached her potential. Mm-hmm. She's, she's done very big. She's done big movies. So she did like 13 ghosts. Um, you know, she did the, the flip mode album. Then she had her own album called dirty Harriet, which was crazy. If you listen to the songs, Imperial, um, the song tight, um, I saw this song on there that I was listening to. Um, 
the, the whole album Dirty Harry is just insane. So Dirty Harry, Harry a thug man, tight. Yeah. What yeah. they call me, mm-hmm. Imperial will bust around. Yeah. Showdown curtains, yeah. the last word. And once again, standing tall, standing firm. I'm gonna say this again, and that's that's just her, right? And then party and and, and B, party and BS. She did that single. I think that album was. I don't know what happened. I, I never did understand. I, I think she did an interview explaining that, but I never understood what happened with that album because she was supposed to do another album. And then the whole thing with Buster kind of went left, and I, I don't, you know, not even go left with Buster, but like with Flip Mode and Electra and all that, that that just kind of went goofy. But you know, she she's she's every track she's been on, she's done destroyed it. She has literally stepped up. She's kind of epitome of like, um, you know, before when female MCs, it was starting to be, it was starting to be a package, mm-hmm. and it's not, and you know, like it, you know, a female had had to have a certain look. And they they better had a, it, the skills was kind of like secondary as opposed to the look. It started to get mm. to that. Well, yeah, yeah, but at that time period, so she was oh, on that, that, yeah. she was on that um, album in '98. So yeah. we still had Biggie. You know, I mean, I'm sorry, Kim. Missy Elliott. Yeah, we still had very lyrical MCs. Even down south, we had Trina who was spinning yeah. crazy. Yeah, um, Three Six Mafia. They right. had La Chat and um. Gangsta Bull. Rest in peace to Gangsta Bull. So we were still in that era, especially with female MCs, where it was still lyrics over mm-hmm. that extra stuff. Right. No, agreed. So my whole thing is just that at the end of the day, um, you know, Rod Digger is just one of those MCs that I, I, I don't think not many, many female MCs could see her. She's her. She kind of reminds me of Remy Ma. Like Remy Ma is always, you know, is 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 in Remy Ma. Especially at that time. Yeah, Remy Ma lyrically lights you up. Like, don't do it. She was in that Yeah Baby album. Yeah, don't do it. You know what I'm saying? Rod Digger's that same caliber of artist. She will she will get you. It's not worth it. You know what I'm saying? So that's and that's and that's back then where it was a male dominated industry. She stood out on a posse cut with the Fuji's and Lauren Hill. She stood out on let's say that one more time. She stood out on a posse cut with her crew in the Fuji's. Then she stood out in in in, in, a, in a crew called the Flip Mode Squad with Busta Rhymes, who at that time was can, top. Can I add something? To, oh, yeah. Who DJ and producer was DJ Scratch. We're, we're gonna put a pen in DJ oh, Scratch yep. name and come I, back to I, that. Yeah, facts. Well, go, go ahead. Then 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 you know um, with DJ, you know, so she she stood out in that in that crew too. And then Dirty Harry album. I mean, go go listen to it. There's a reason. You know what I'm saying? She should have, the industry failed her. I'm going to say you that. Think you, I, okay. Yes, 1,000% the industry. I don't know how Electra let that girl, that woman slip. How did you let that slip through your hands? So she, she, it's not like she wasn't selling albums. It's not like they weren't selling records. And to be honest, and she said it in interviews before, like a lot of that stuff that Buster was doing out the Flip One album, that was Flip Mode songs. So they were writing on those songs, and they were taking their verses off. Y'all dropped the ball. Mm. Y'all dropped the ball. So it is what it is, but I don't know how they let her slip past. And then nobody else kind of, I don't know, because I don't think maybe she just didn't want to do it anymore. I don't know. She See, had that, a 13. That, that would be like the next question. Yeah. If we ever had a chance to interview her. You know, I don't see her doing much media, but. Because she does a thing with Lord Jamal, the podcast. Gotcha. Yeah. But that would be an interesting <clears throat> question as far as, you know, after those things went sour, were there other crews? To reach out to her because we always know like for example like g-unit was always looking for somebody yeah at that time period yeah, yeah. other crews in general but right that'd be interesting to hear her her perspective from that yeah because i i know she's on my math office podcast she said that you know buster and, and and this is no shot at buster i think he's i don't know if we ever shouted him out and we'll we'll cross that bridge when we have to but the thing is with buster he and i'm not trying to throw shots at him it just seemed like he's always had the talent he never takes that talent to the next level. So Spliff's never dropped the album. Baby Sham. Um, what's the kid's name? Lord of Mercy. I used to live in Long Island, so I'm going to shout out Reek the Villain. Rampage. Like, he had Rampage's first album, and that went, was very successful. But then things, I don't know what happened. So then you come out with the conglomerate, and you you, you had those cats with Prayer and his son and all them. Nothing. But did not sidetrack to go back. Rod Digger is one of the top. It's first female MCs, top 10. 
Easily okay, so top you got, 10. Okay. Maybe top five because I'm oh, trying to think of who else is next. Who, 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 if, if you, you I, I guarantee, I'm you trying know to think. You're going to get us in trouble. No, on I, I don't TikToks. care. I don't care. And I don't care if I sound like the old head. We ain't, I know we ain't talking about Ice Spice. No Glorilla. But we no, got, no, we got to talk about We got to talk. We got to, we got to throw in, obviously, the Lauren Hill. Okay. MC, yes. Um, Light. Elliott. MC Light. Definitely Light's in top five. Light. Missy Elliott. Yeah. You think she's in the top five for female MCs? As far as writing what she did with her style. Okay. No, no, no. I, I'm just asking. Yeah. Uh, I got to throw MC Light in there. Yeah. Yeah. Light is definitely top five. <sighs> I'm, see, do we, do we uh, respectfully from Jersey skip a Queen Latifah? I don't know. I don't, I don't think so. I don't think so. We can't skip Queen Latifah. <laughs> Maybe it's because it's been so long and she's even said anything or rapped anything. But yeah, she's got to be in the top five. Then you got Brooklyn. Can't skip over Brooklyn. You talking about Foxy? You talking about Kim? Yeah. You think she's better than Rod Digger? No. I'm just yeah, saying. Yeah, I was about for... to say. Rod Digger, <laughs> up. If, he, if maybe Kim, no, no disrespect. Kim has more hits. Kim also, shouts out to Lil' Kim because I think she never gets credibility for her artist, artistry. Because remember when Biggie was alive, he's like, oh, Big's Big writing her rhymes. Writing. But then, and then she then started Big writing. died, and then she seemed She's, to take she right back going. on. Yeah, she kept going. So I don't want to hear that. that that's that's so BS. Where, so where are we at with this yeah. list? I can't see. Kim over Digger? Why? Because Kim no, got more hits? No, no. I'm just, I'm just, let, let, let's start um, over. Let's start over. Okay, okay. So where you want to start at? Roxanne Shantae? Roxanne, no. No, no. no. Um, oh my God, this is gonna be. We're gonna get in trouble. <laughs> uh, Queen Latifah, clearly. Queen Latifah, MC Light, Light. Okay. Um, Missy Elliott, she has to be in there. Lauren Hill, of course. Lauren. So we have four. <sighs> you know, Remy Ma's in that nineties. Yeah, Remy's in that. Uh, she top. came at the tail end of the nineties. I don't. I don't want to say she's not in the top five, but she's. You. We got to go top ten. We can't do okay. top five. So Remy Ma. Who am I missing? Kim, you got to put Kim in there. So that's six. Who am I missing? I feel like there's somebody I'm missing here. Trina from the south. She was spitting crazy. Okay, I'll give it to you. I'll give you that. Uh. And, you know, of course, um, Rod Digger. Rod Digger. She's in Rod. Rod's in there. But she's not ranked number eight. I don't want to hear that. Um, oh, yeah, boy. <laughs> nah. I, I think Rod's in. She, if she's not in the top five, she's, she's at least number six. That's okay. at least where she's at. I mean, let me, let's keep going. What is it? You said Trina? Yeah. Trina's number you So Trina, that makes eight. Yep. <sighs> Jesus. There's two more. Oh, my God. Mm. We gotta. Can we put Foxy in there? Would you put Foxy in Hell there? Hell yeah, we'll put Foxy in there. Okay, because it it's always she does. She didn't write all her rhymes, so sometimes that takes away. But we gonna we gonna put Foxy in there just because you of what she did. I ain't saying nothing, man. I'm just speaking what I'm speaking. Look at you, <laughs> oh boy. She <laughs> I'm trying to think. So One we'll more. Um. Oh. No, Rax. No, you know, there's salt and pepper. We bugging. Do you want to put salt? But salt and pepper was a group. So you can't I, really put them in, no, in the anytime. We, we don't forgot somebody. Who? Oh, boy. We don't forgot somebody. We ain't gonna put Nikki in there. From this era. Yeah, Nikki, Nikki. Well, Nikki's Nikki, yeah, from today. Nikki will do, yeah. We yeah. talking about MCs. People can yeah. front on her all she want, all yeah. they want. Yeah, Nikki, Nikki can go writes in there. her own rhymes and get busy. And then I'm from the mixtape era of Nikki. So no particular order. Yeah, no particular order. I'm just saying Rod's in the Rod's in the top ten. Do you do you do you leave Roxanne and Shantae out? You ain't about to get me choked up. <laughs> <out>. She gangster. <laughs> do you leave Roxanne and Shantae? I No, because of what she did for hip hop. Yeah. I'm see. No, I, I think she's in the top so, ten. So I'm just me, trying to figure it out. So with me, I always say, um, I don't like the popularity contest when we talk hip hop. No I don't matter either. If it's men's, women's, DJs, producer. Right. I'm not the person, and we're gonna talk about this because this goes right into the Migos conversation that we're gonna have later. Yeah. I don't like the whole oh they're popular or they sold so many singles, so that means they're the best. Well, Roxanne Shantae did for hip hop. 
we talking about a time in the 80s where when it was not a popular where it thing. wasn't popular and we all saw from her biopic and you know the interviews out there she was standing on our own too at 13 and 14 against grown men facts facts at a time where they were trying to sexualize her she was like i right, let's battle for mm. money in the 80s so mm. yeah she gave nas his name Facts. I remember <laughs> like that. Like that's important things that. for hip hop culture. So hell yeah, we can't leave. We can't leave Roxanne Shante off. Can that. I ask you something? Hold up. So, because I know you like to do the clips. So this so, so is how we gonna do it. Rod Digger is in the top ten. That's what I am gonna say. I'm going to firmly establish that that Rod Digger is in the top ten. She she can hang. She her mic skills can hang with anybody. It can hang with Remy Martin. It can hang with Little Kim. It can hang with with. Rock, um, Roxanne Shante. It can hang with. I'm sorry, I, I, I really see you as high as an artist. It can hang with Queen Latifah. There's nobody that Rod Digger can't handle on the mic. Nobody. Mm-hmm. I don't care who it is. Lady Luck, any of them. I'm telling you, from even a battle perspective, um, um, Rod Digger is 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 what she is. She's she's top caliber, That's top agreed. ten, at least top ten. That's at least what she is, and I. That's a debate for another day. Maybe we'll do another podcast because yeah, we kind of we, we kind of got out. we kind of got involved in, and when it came up, I was like, "Whoa, let me think about that for a minute." Yeah, but I was like, "No, no, no." That's well, an interesting. Well, conversation. you know what? I'm I'm gonna put Rod in the top five. I just don't so, know about the other so four. We'll, we'll come we'll come back to the yeah. conversation. Yeah, but name your five with her in it. Of course, Lauren. Of course, Ra. I'm gonna put Roxanne Shante in there. Just because of what she what what she was doing back then, I think people really don't understand, like you said, what she was doing. Um, yeah, I got two more, right? Did I put that name Kim already? Nope. I'm gonna put Kim in there just because Brooklyn. That's four. Just because it's Brooklyn, I don't care. <laughs> so, um, mm, Remy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You got one of yeah, mine because yeah, I thought she was gonna <laughs> yeah. bug out and leave Remy yeah, off. That no, 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 no. I love Remy. So that's your five. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna go with as well. Roxy and Shantae. Roxy and Shantae. I'm gonna throw Missy Elliott in there because okay. I think she's underrated. Lauren oh, Hill. Facts, yeah. Remy Martin. Mm-hmm. And I got Nikki. Really? So I, I leave Rod Digger slightly out of my top five. Mm-hmm. I have her at six, right outside the top five. Okay. And then for my and then interchangeable, I know it's at five, but then no, no, I, go ahead. I'm gonna start out, I'm gonna shout out the South for with Trina. Yeah. Cena rep Trina Trina rep the South. You know, uh, I'm not gonna say uh, you know who who never got a shot was Shauna. Mm-hmm. She never really got that Shauna shot. Shauna from Chicago? Yeah, yeah, she never got the shot she should have got. Like she, she never. I mean, she never got the opportunity she should have had gotten. She had like a hot single. She would show up. You knew who, how nice she was. It just never. It never went to where it was supposed to go. You mm-hmm. get what I'm saying? I don't know why, but for Rod Digger, I, I, she has always shined, no matter what. Like I think she in, dropped the independent album, but at this point, you know, it's, it's, it had been so long. You know what I mean? But it's, it's I'm, I'm pretty sure I haven't listened to it, but I'm pretty sure it's, it's, it's somatic. Let mm-hmm. me do it like this, and you don't have to limit it to five or ten. Mm-hmm. Just in general, where does she stack up against the other New Jersey artists? You talking about like Trash Redman and them? Do it all? Um, Why wow, you gonna really put me on the spot with that? So I'm thinking about Jersey legends. There's Trash, Redman, Lords of the Underground. Somebody I'm missing here because it's somebody else from Jersey. Uh, Queen Latifah. Queen Latifah. Uh, who else from Jersey I'm missing? I don't think there's anybody else. Nah, nah, it's got to be. Yeah, no, it's it's. She's in there. Technically, Lauren Hill. Yeah, yeah, they're all from Jersey. Lauren Hill is Jersey too. Yeah, no Fuji's. She's in there. She's in there. You got to remember, she came out. Does New Jersey have the better artists? Do New Jersey have the better? Do New York? Yeah, you bugging, man. (laughs) (laughs) I'm trying to get something started. No, no, no. 
And we that that was always an issue. Don't worry, you ain't starting oh, nothing. Oh, that oh, was oh, already started hold back up. then. Oh, hold up, internet. <laughs> I think Jersey felt hold like up. they never even get respect. Hold, hold up, internet. Mm. Do New Jersey have the better artists? No. Mm. Y'all got Lauren Hill. They have greats. They do. Y'all got Queen Latifah. Really? Got iced tea. So you do you want to talk? Oh, he's from L.A., man. What are you doing? Born in Jersey. Oh, here we go. <laughs> so okay. So wait. So you're gonna and, and against New York? Are you serious? You talking about Biggie, Nas, Jay, and that's the first three. We ain't even talking. With, oh, yeah, 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 I got yeah, pop, yeah, I got pop too. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. Got, we got pop. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you want even subtracting him. So you got Biggie, Nas, and Jay, right? That's that's New York. Mm-hmm. That's that's the top three artists, and that's not to mention all the other ones, all the other greats that done come out of Queens and Brooklyn and Harlem and Cameron and Bronx with Karis One and Fat Joe and we, really, we're gonna have a conversation about Jersey and the I, tri in the tri state. Can I say something though? Can I say something? It's not that Jersey isn't better than New York. It, to be honest with you though. I, Tretch talked about this. He felt like, and Redman talked about it too. He's like, he felt like Jersey never really got the respect he did. But I don't know. I saw Jersey's the same thing. I ain't seen him no different than from New York. It's right the over the thing. bridge. Yeah, it didn't. It didn't really matter. I yeah, know. I was just trying to start <coughs> something, and then that. Yeah, no, I, know, I was just know. trying to start some so shit. I, think, I, I don't think. I don't think it was never a thing where they were. We felt like it was better. They, they the Jersey's right across the way. They just part of us. Mm-hmm. Same thing. We just they weren't. It just couldn't officially say they were New Yorkers, but they were. It was the same damn thing, man. They were across the water. That's all they heard. So much respect to Rod Degger and her yeah. contributions to hip hop. Yeah. Yeah. You I got her in the top five. I think she and also is a jewel. When you look at how she carried herself, and like I said, it's no shot to other female artists. I think everybody has their own personality. She was who she was. You knew better than to go. I I'm telling you as a man, I, I wouldn't want to go in there and try to back. Cause you thinking in the back of your mind, she might beat you. <laughs> like you don't want to do it. And if she's doing this with Busta Rhymes and all of them at the peak of their careers, I you know. You ain't got no chance, chance with her on the mic. Yeah, she's not scared of you. Like, it's not going to work. So, you know, and she ran with a crew called the Outsiders. That was clearly who they was. You know what I mean? So, I, like I said, I think she gets enough credibility. And once again, the one thing she has over everybody's head, she did a track with Lauren Hill in her prime at the score. Not that I'm not talking about that her solo album, which we all know everybody loved, but the score for her to be on that track with all those artists and still shine. Enough, enough said. Enough said. Much respect to Rock Digger. All day. Second discussion of hip hop. We got now, to, just real quick though. We 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 gonna have to revisit that again. Oh that yeah. That female artist. I was like, oh God, because yeah, Yo 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 too. Remember oh, yeah. her? Yeah. There's, there's, there's a lot more that we're forgetting. Ooh, God, Jesus. That's going to be a whole podcast by yeah. itself. Yeah. <laughs> so next hip-hop topic. Mm-hmm. Now, we briefly discussed, not briefly, we touched on this topic three months ago when mm-hmm. we were giving flowers to EPMD and their contributions to hip-hop. Mm-hmm. So about a couple weeks ago, the Migos, or a member of the Migos, Lord of mercy. did an interview, <laughs> and he came out and said, I believe that he pits his group as a top three of all times no matter north south east or west Mm -hmm. he said the migos are a top three hip-hop group period cool everybody's (laughs) entitled to their own opinion Mm -hmm. so then the joe buttons podcast they were reacting to that and i want to say last week or a week ago they put out a clip where they were asking the cast members their thoughts on the migos being a top group and Joe started rattling off names. Mm-hmm. Joe said, so are they better than EPMD? Mm-hmm. Are they better than, you know, Daz FX? You know, for some reason, names that we talked about three months ago. But that's neither here nor there. Can I respond to that? Thanks for letting us know you're watching us. Go ahead. Keep yeah, that's going. neither here nor there. Yeah, yeah. I just got to do that. <laughs> everybody on the podcast who's our age and older, because mm-hmm. we're old heads. Mm-hmm. Those are not some twenty year olds in the joke. They they are all above thirty five. Not to put their ages out there, right. but they they talk, they, <laughs> yeah. they put their ages out right, there. Right, right. They're all old heads like us. Joe Buttons from Jersey. Yeah, yeah. And Rod Diggle, get him. Go ahead. But I'm gonna stick on, on this. <laughs> We're gonna topic. stick with that. Yeah, I ain't gonna let that go. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah, yo. But everybody on the um 
everybody on the podcast was like emphatically the Migos is better than EPMD. Mm -hmm. So I'm sitting up there scratching my head like, where are we at in hip hop where we're saying the Migos are better than these 90s legends? Absolutely not, sir. And I want to flesh this out than just saying, oh, they don't know what they're talking about. I want to really go into it. So on the Migos side, they were saying how influential they are. And then obviously people are going to throw up the numbers. Oh, they sold 30 million records. Yeah. Great. I don't take nothing away from them. Mm -hmm. I love the Versace remix, but let's keep it a buck. If Drake isn't, if Drake isn't on that remix, do you know that record? No. No. Um, mm -hmm. They had the Motorsport with Nicki Minaj. Again, another record with a bigger artist. You see where I'm going with this? Anyway, they did their thing. I'm not taking nothing away from them. But I want to revisit EPMD's impact on hip hop and why that's a disingenuous conversation. Why you shouldn't even put those two in the same category. Right. Can I throw that to you? Yeah. Why doesn't that make if I if 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 we're having a barbershop conversation and somebody yeah. says, Oh, yeah, the Migos is a top group and they are better than EPMD, mm -hmm. can we quickly flesh over why that's nonsense? That is with nonsense. facts. Well, first of all, EPMD, who's who sold a bunch of records, right? They when they came out, there was no there's no social media. They had to like get out there and really like get in the studio. Let let me just put that little part out. First of all, they got signed to Def Jam. They were kid, what are you like seventeen? Mm -hmm. Eric and Patrick, yeah, they, they were seventeen years old, making hit records, not selling out clubs. They were selling out arenas in the eighties and early nineties. I'm gonna say this again. They weren't selling out clubs. They were selling out arenas. In the late 80s, early 90s. Thank you. I'm going to keep saying that. Right. So I, I, that's one part of it. Another part of it is they went off, even when they split, they created a, 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 a all-time GOAT group, crew, group or crew, whatever, because I saw those yeah, comments too. Was, oh, no, yeah, that's a crew. crew and that's oh, a whatever, group. Okay. man. Yeah, it don't even really matter. That's that's called just nitpicking and I'm not going to go use other words, but it's just like Let me nitpicking. say this. Yeah. Even if you want to nitpick, when we talk about influence, don't we always use the terminology mm -hmm. like a tree? Yeah. So when we talk about Dr. Dre, we always say, okay, if Dr. Dre, if Dr. Dre is this, look at the branches off of Dr. Dre's tree. Facts. Okay, so go back, use that same analogy with EPMD. They, they Yeah, they had to, they, 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 they created an all-time group called a hit squad with K-Solo, who made hits, with Daz Effects, who transcended with their style of rap. And they try to make fun of Daz Effects, but yeah, let's yeah, who, go. Who, somebody who? Somebody's making some little comments, but That's okay. okay. Daz Effects is a, is a go group, one of the go groups of all time, just for what they did. Then he, you brought in Redman at the time, who was from Jersey, came from Def Jam. Can, he, we, can we stop there? When we talk yeah. about influence and why this conversation with the Migos being better than EPMD per the Joe Buttons podcast, mm. much respect to them. We can stop the conversation at Redman because when we talk about influence, Eric Sermon is directly responsible for finding Redman, bringing him to Long Island, producing him, pitting him on their album in the 90s. Yeah. Do the Migos have anything equivalent to a Redman? No. Who, the conversation they, really stops with Redman, but if you want to keep going for the sake of hip hop, let's go. Their look, influence, the fisherman has the gold chains, everything. Their look alone. Now, let me go here. Even when they split as a group, right, mm -hmm. they produce more. Like, Parrish kept going with Daz, who kept kept selling, who sold platinum and gold, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think I think they did three or four albums after that, like after they left at him and Parrish. Eric split. Then that's not to mention Redman. Keith Murray came along. Then it was the Def Squad, and they were going on tours, once again, selling out arenas. Mm -hmm. Don't know what the Migos in the do. What? <laughs> No, just I'll give, them, and then, I'll give and, them no credit. And then they came back all together, and then they and then EVMD came back together, and they and they still did with their thing, and they still didn't miss a beat. So I'm trying to understand that they have made music that even now they're still like getting attention. You get what I'm saying? They're still doing shows. So I'm trying to understand how the Migos are some top three group of all time. Are you crazy? Even if I take, we're going to keep EPMD in it, but even if I take EPMD out, there's like other <clears throat> group from the 90s. Like yes. Whether you want to say 3-6 Mafia from the yes. South, who I would pit over them. Whether Facts. you want to say Bone Thugs and Harmony. Yes. Cats from the West Coast. Yeah, but different groups. Oh, since my they God. Pit, since they brought up EPMD, because I, see, the thing is, 
like cats don't really do their research with hip hop. So they thought that was an easy one. Oh, let's throw EPMD out there. You know, was something that me and you brought up, but nobody else brought up. Listen. See, people think EPMD is just Eric Sermon and Paris McDollars. Yeah. You forgot the DJ is important part of hip hop. Facts. Who was Preach EPMD's D. DJ? DJ Scratch. DJ Scratch. Mm-hmm. Oh, do you want to talk about DJ Scratch's discography? I don't think, <laughs> think you so. do. Sure Mind don't. you, you guys are older than us and should know better because mm-hmm. if we pull up DJ Scratch's discography, it can't. He can do a versus by himself with the Migos. Yeah, I'm gonna say that again. EPMD, Eric Sermon, Paris McDollars. Yes, those are the MCs, but the group includes the DJ, DJ Scratch. DJ Scratch's discography can do a versus by himself with the Migos. Go look up his production credits. You think they're better than, than, than Dipset? Who? The Migos. <laughs> <laughs> EPMD is Eric Sermon and Paris Make Dollars with DJ Scratch. <laughs> DJ Scratch's Yo. discography, he can do a versus by himself with the Migos. Yo. Did a lot of production for Buster Rhymes. You might want to go look that up. Yeah. Can I ask you something? Do you know who the Migos DJ is? Absolutely not. And we're not going to say DJs don't matter because when we go watch the verses from the Locks and Dips set, we see how incredible DJs matter. Matter of fact, we are the only ones that have ever put out a magazine with a tribute to the DJ. That's a whole nother topic. Let me leave that, but I, you yeah. can go look. You look us up. Look us up online. You'll see it. But I think that's where the conversation is getting lost because hip hop is five elements. Yeah. Graffiti, DJing, B-boying and B-girling, the MC and the knowledge. There's five elements. People yeah. keep leaving the DJs out of this conversation. Yeah. That's why I think it's a, everybody's entitled to their own opinions. I know, I know. But when we talk about hip hop and groups, you got to look up who the DJ is. Can I say something? They, I'm real quick. You get done. Go ahead. They said DJ Scratch, who was an EPMD, was a part of 13 albums, seven of which went platinum, six went gold. Mm. As far as his production, he produced on seven platinum albums, mm-hmm. albums that include when DJ Clue went platinum. You remember that? Yep. He was producing on that. Oh, as wow. well as Eric Sermon, as well as Busta Rhymes, and then six gold albums. That's just him by himself, not including Eric Sermon's production credits. Right. Not him as an MC, his production credits. I don't think them cats as producers. Mm. Maybe they are, but I'm, you know, yeah. I had to go research it. But just hold that note. Go ahead. Well, I, I just think, and I'm trying to think about what else, like, then they're sitting up there saying that. Like, yo, do we not see what Dipset and D-Block... Did we, did you, let me just take Jadakus alone. Did you not see what the locks were doing up there? With a DJ. The locks alone would rip them apart. Mm -hmm. And Dip said if they was, if they was more organized. they were organized. They would rip the Migos apart. Are you kidding me? You ain't going to go up there in no battle, man. You, you going to look like the top 25. What are you doing? What are you doing? Oh my God. That's a fact. Are you kidding me? See, you know what it is? Is that they're not out there like that doing, doing, you know, doing the, 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 the you know, they're not part of the young crowd. But I mean, it, Dipset didn't even play their whole catalog. They only played certain songs and they were playing like one or two verses. Uh, they would rip the Migos apart. I'm going to blame that on arrogance and their DJ. Man, like, man, come on, man. But back to the My crux God. of the conversation. Yeah. I just wanted to address that. Not from an emotional standpoint, but from a hip hop standpoint, why that's a disingenuous conversation. And like I said in my comments, I don't think people fully understand the impact of EPMD, which is not just Eric Sermon and Parrish Make Dollars, EPMD, but their DJ, DJ Scratch, and what they meant mm-hmm. for a whole generation of hip hop. Right. You don't get a red man without EPMD. The conversation really starts stops there, but it keeps going. They're not in the same conversation. Absolutely true. Next topic of priority. Since we've been out, we had a nuclear arms race in hip hop. <laughs> What's that? Guys, address it. <laughs> the nuclear arms race, man. Mm-hmm. Kendrick jumped on the record with future Metro Booming. Mm-hmm. Got busy. Mm-hmm. Said, you know. 
after Big Three, it's just me. Boom. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That got our boy J. Cole in his feelings. Mm. Salute to J. J. Cole. Before I say what I'm about to say, let me just clarify. I was, a, I am still a huge J. Cole fan. Mm-hmm. I remember I was living in Long Island at the time when he dropped that Born Center album. Mm-hmm. So I have a friend who lives in the Bronx. Shout out to my homie Rod Raspy. Um, go pick him up from the Bronx for like a week straight. Whatever we're doing, studios, videos, whatever. I'm playing this album, Born Center, so much. He gets tired of it. He looks at me. He's like, yo, D, man, you my man, but you need, to, <laughs> you need to throw this CD in the back and piss something else in. Right, 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 right. I, like, I can get you some music because yeah. you're wearing this album out, man. Right, right, right. So I just leave that there. So J. Cole responds with his track, but then he apologizes. That just happened, what, a day or two ago? So mm-hmm. that's been a conversation within hip-hop on media. Mm-hmm. Um about him apologizing and what that means to his legacy. And then we're going to touch on this a little bit for the next five minutes. The competitive nature of hip hop outside of street beefs. Mm -hmm. Because people was trying to take the conversation like this was a street beef. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't. But what are your thoughts on the nuclear arm race between J. Cole and Kendrick? Well, one, I don't know why Kendrick Lamar keeps talking like he's the best guy in the world. I mean, he's... I don't. He, ain't Drake the hottest dude right now? Drake is still the hottest guy. Yo, hey man, come on, hey. I, I I'm just I'm being serious because Kendrick dropped something. And I don't think we we even knew about it. Do we really want to be funny about that? So if you if you the top if you the top guy, you we should know more about what you dropping. There's people that I don't even I don't even follow, but I know they drop some stuff. Mm-hmm. I think you need to try a little harder, brother. Yeah, I, I mm-hmm. think you. I think you're feeling yourself a little bit too much. I think you Are know, you still in your feelings about the control verse? The control what what you mean when he was going at When uh, he said he's the king of New York. Oh man, I am not even <laughs> responding to that. He yeah, but I I just think that he's I think is let me put it this way. He should feel the way he feels. Mm-hmm. He should. I'm not I'm not disputing that. But I mean, uh, you know, you it's just me. It's just you. What 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 have you been doing? We, we, we don't, we don't know what you've been doing. Th- no, I do. But this is my great with Kendrick. Mm, yeah. Great music. But see, this is why I'm so conflicted with J. Cole apologizing. I get it. I'm never going to tell a man not to be who he is mm-hmm. and not to say what's on his heart. Right. But he's, he had one bar in there that was kind of like, you know, one album every four or five years. And I was sitting back like, that's my problem with Kendrick. As great as he is, you'll disappear for like four years. Yeah. I for, mm-hmm. Like that last album, like people, oh, he came out with an album like a year ago or two years ago. I don't remember that album. I don't either. I'm not I, saying I, don't I don't think I knew about I'm it. I'm not saying I don't remember it because mm-hmm. I'm not trying to look it up. I'm saying it came and went. It didn't yes. have no memorable moments in it. N- not now, at the all. albums before that, like To Pimp a Butterfly, Good yeah. Kid, Mad City, yeah. great catalog, right? great verses. Mm-hmm. That last album, I think that was just to fulfill his contract because he's not no longer, even though he's family with TDE, contractually, that contract's up. Oh, okay. Yeah, cool. so now he's moving. Now the apology part. Me and you as being students of hip-hop, as growing up in a culture, we've seen numerous diss records. Right. We've seen the Roxanne, the Shantae's. Mm-hmm. We've seen the KRS-1s versus the MC Shans. We've seen the Cannabis versus LL Cool J, and we can keep naming records all day. Mm-hmm. Do you think in the competitive sport of hip-hop, How do I say this without sounding like an a hole? Do you think that like that was the right move? What from J Cole? Yeah. No. What apologizing? Yeah. No. This soon? Yeah. Like no. Because you know what they're gonna say. I was reading I, Twitter and they was like, "Well, well, Jay Z apologized." No, it, they don't know the context. Oh, I know the say, context yeah, yeah, behind yeah, that. Okay, but yeah. go ahead. But he, I, he, he, J Cole. What was he? It depends. What was he thinking? It was gonna get aggressive. Like, and if that's the case, like, come on, man, you could have just figured it out. I think, I think, you know, for whatever reason, I don't know who told him to do it. I mean, maybe he knows. And if he's okay with it, well, that's fine. Well, but here's some context before the pot, you know, I was watching the Joe Buttons network and mm-hmm. they were talking about, he's saying Joe Buttons is insinuating, and this is him, not us, that he has some insider information that Kendrick Lamar and Drake are about to go nuclear. Really? 
And J. Cole's like, yeah, I might want to step back. <laughs> this is why I said it's an arms race. Right, 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 right. Because right. apparently, now this is, now maybe Joe Buttons is fishing. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But apparently he, he said he heard something. He said if it's true, it might get nuclear by this weekend. Wow. Mm. Back to the J. Cole apology yeah. thing. I, are, are, you, are you good on your end? Wait, 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 what, the, the J. Cole apology? Yeah. I, as long as he's okay with it, I mean, it is, but I don't think it was a good look. Mm-hmm. I just don't I just don't understand why you did it. I mean, you, you could just said, yo, you know, I had to get him, and that's just what it was, and I didn't really like that I had to do it, but being that he said it, I'm going to have to clearly respond. That's how you could have nipped it in the bud. He said yeah. that in the song. Yeah. yeah. He's, you, said, you said he said that in the song? He said that in the song. And oh. He was like, my brother, but. I got to get you. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm really seeing that. Yeah, no, I guess it's okay. So he didn't really need to apologize then. Nah, he felt he did. Oh, yeah. Lord Jesus. So for me, I'm going to touch on, I guess, the, I'll label it as internet conversation. Because mm-hmm. it gave it gave way to some weird conversation on the internet. And I'm addressing it all. Because I saw all the, the PhD thesis y'all was writing on Twitter and Instagram mm-hmm. about how this is why we in the black community need to see black men apologizing and mm-hmm. that was being all fake, fake mature. And mm-hmm. yeah, this is, this is what we need to be doing in our community. And I, I read all the PhD thesis statements on Twitter. Oh Lord Jesus. Let me say this. What we're not going to do with hip hop culture is mm-hmm. act like we don't know the culture. If you don't know the culture, just say that. Mm-hmm. I said it earlier. There are five elements of hip hop. <laughs> DJing, MCing, B-Boys and B-Girls, Graffiti, and the Knowledge of Hip Hop. At its inception as a culture from the 70s and 80s, it was always competitive. Mm -hmm. We have historical hip hop movies Mm -hmm. where they documented it, where they, when they came to house parties, what were the crews doing? They were battling. Battling. They were seeing who was dressed the flyest. The Mm -hmm. DJs were seeing who had the best scratches. The B-Boys and B-Girls was getting down as, they had whole dance crews back then, yeah. all up and down the East Coast. The graffiti artists were tagging buildings, and if they saw somebody tagging a building too close to them, they was trying to graffiti it better. Yeah. Yeah. And the MCs were battling. Had nothing to do with street beef. So that whole narrative of, yeah, I just want to see something negative in hip-hop, No, this has always (laughs) been the culture from its inception. Right. So I'll leave that there for the internet conversation. Mm -hmm. Since J. Cole is my era, we're around the same age range in our Mm thirties. I grew up on his music. I did. I, I thought that him and Kendrick were going to take the mantle as the faces of hip hop. And when I mean the faces of hip hop, like Mm -hmm. at one point, the older generation looked at Jay-Z and Nas. Right. And at least from our perspective, because I know the West Coast and the South has something to say about their prospective leaders, but I'm just saying Mm -hmm. for us being from New York and so forth. Right. The same way how we looked at Jay-Z and Nas in the early 2000s, I thought we were starting to look at Kendrick and J. Cole and Drake like that. That's that whole big three statement. Okay. When you set yourself up at the mantle, it's competition. If I'm a basketball player and I'm on a top-ranked high school team, you might live across town. You might be my homeboy that lives in Schenectady. Guess what? We got a battle when we see each other on the court. It's no yeah. hard feelings. Yeah. I thought this could have been a competitive moment in hip-hop that could have gave way to some great artwork that had nothing to do with street beef. There was nobody with a half a brain that looked at Kendrick (laughs) and looked at J. Cole and said, if one wrong record comes out, they about to get physical. Right. Nobody was thinking that. No, not at all. That's where I am. Be who you are. I'm not going to be overly emotional about you apologizing. But from a hip hop perspective, I think it was the wrong move. And now all those little pop shots you were taking in your record about how you know, I'll make an example out of somebody. Mm-hmm. Respectfully, nobody wants to hear it now. <laughs> yeah. you, you can make great records still. Yeah. I won't discredit your catalog, mm-hmm. but all this, I'm going to make an example. If you try me, now that has to be laid to bed because somebody tried you and you said, I, I, I you know, it's not in my soul to do this. Right. Right. 
So now in the next five years, like I, I hope the fall off is your retirement album. Mm-hmm. If you're about to retire, it makes sense. I, I don't know. That's just where I'm at with it. Yeah. You know. Felt it in your spirit. Do your thing. I'm with you. But from the competitive standpoint of hip hop, we don't want to hear it now. <laughs> and if Joe Button sources is correct, I'm looking forward to the nuclear arm race. Yeah. Yeah. Because we done heard some classic records from Drake, especially when he was going at Meat Mills or Pusha T and so forth. So <laughs> I'm seeing what artistically Drake and Kendrick can do. And if that goes down, that's going to be a good moment in hip hop. Facts. Facts. Do we got any more hip hop to discuss? Um, no, I don't think so. All right. I got one like current event to talk about before okay. we jump into sports. And this isn't current. This is something that happened while I was sick, while we were out. Mm-hmm. So the news, the political news about the TikTok ban. Did you hear about that? No. So they voted. I, no, I did hear about it. I, I heard about it. Okay, but I so they, they voted on a bill. And ironically, at the um, House of Representatives, we can never get the Democrats and Republicans to agree on something. <laughs> you know, something basic like affordable health care. Right, 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 right. Housing. Right. You know the important stuff that matter. Uh-huh. But for some reason, you had Nancy Pelosi at the House of Representatives talking about tic-tac-toe and all this other where sh- she was talking about. Right. And they really passed the bill where TikTok might not be in, no longer in existence in six to seven months. Why? What's the reason? They're doing it under the guise of data tracking. They think because it's owned by a company called Bitright, which is a, um, I want to say an Asian, a Asian corporation owns Bitright, which is the owner of TikTok. They're saying that it's spy software wow that's crazy so they're trying to force them to sell it to an american american investor or buyer right but if you read their bylaws and stuff within that they're um they have laws that they don't sell their software okay so they know it's not going to be sold so pretty much there's a good chance that tiktok tiktok might be banned in six to eight months okay that's a huge problem because of all the stuff that people have been learning. Right. Yeah, it's fun with the cute little dances, but people have been passing <laughs> information on that, like amongst amongst each other. Like it's been a useful tool. Mm-hmm. So for for that to be banned, but we still have Facebook. Knowing what Facebook has been guilty of, yeah, it's a little it's a little crazy. Yeah. What are it's your thoughts a on that? Too late too at this point. Yeah. That's kind of how I feel. Like I don't, I don't understand. But I mean, it's you can't really. It's not gonna matter. I mean, between what is it, Twitter? No, I'm sorry, X, Facebook, Instagram, all that. It, the information, it ain't gonna, it ain't gonna change. You think taking TikTok off is gonna change it? Really? Somebody out there is gonna get smart and do Lord something. Lord have mercy. And enough, you're right. They'll find a new app, and create a new system, and that'll be something else. So you might as well just roll it out and just leave it alone. Let me do this quick drop. <laughs> hey, for everybody that messes with us on TikTok, just in case TikTok gets banned in the future, mm-hmm. follow us on our other social media platforms, Facts. especially on YouTube, where we do all our long form content, yep. hip hop interviews, sports, mm. um, podcasts, and so forth. You can find us at youtube.com backslash NV Online and the rest of the social media pa- platforms, NV Online, which is spelled E N V E. Online. Yep. Salute for everybody who follows us on TikTok. But just mm. in case it gets banned, you can follow us there. That's yeah. our drop. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Got you. So off to sports. Now we're into a long sports discussion. Yeah. Now where do you want to go first? Do you want to address the bills or do you want to talk about the tournament? Um, talk about the tournament because you know we uh we that's where we just came from. So before we did this podcast, we were doing media for the NCAA Women's Basketball. The Sweet 16 and the Elite 8 was held here in Albany at the MVP Arena. Say in the Sweet 16. Mm-hmm, that's what yeah, I said. You I said, said the Elite yeah, 8, yeah. No, I said the Sweet 16 and the Elite 8. Oh, okay, okay, gotcha. Gotcha. Um, shout out to Albany for winning that bid and bringing that back here. 
So I want to salute the MVP arena. I thought they did an amazing job being organized. I want to salute one of the media coordinators that works within the MVP arena, Joe Mixey. Is that how yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. Salute. S- salute yeah. to Joe Mixey, man. I, I know you were looking a little um, overwhelmed, but you did a great job, man. So yeah. just want to give you this personal shout out. Salute to Joe Mixey. He did a great job organizing the media around that event. Facts. And gave the opportunity that, that was needed. Definitely. You know. You know. So, where do you want to start with the tournament? Um, we could start with what the the what was the first game? South Carolina, Oregon State. Mm-hmm. Oh no, South Carolina. I'm sorry, South Carolina, Indiana, and Notre Dame and Oregon State. <laughs> That's why. I, do you want to start there, or do you want to start? Well, I want to do a little different because I think if we run down each game, we'll mm-hmm. be here for the next hour talking. Okay, yeah, gotcha. So I don't want to review the games. Okay, gotcha. Let's talk about the atmosphere and the environment. How do mm-hmm. you think that was? Um. Definitely an experience. Mm. I, w- I would say they need to do – I still think they need to split the brackets. Okay. Because you, you're doing four days straight. Um, I think it was unfair to, to people that maybe in other cities could have got an opportunity to see other players. But I think it was great. I mean, we had Dawn Staley in South Carolina. <laughs> we had Indiana, who has their own following. Neil Ivey in Notre Dame. Mm-hmm. Living Miles was even playing. They got a big following. Then you had Oregon State over here, um, and then you had UCLA, UCLA, and then you had um, oh, LSU, LSU with Mulkey and Angel Reese and, and, and Big Foe. Yeah, and uh, then you had um, you know um, Iowa with with with, with Caitlin, Caitlin Clark. Clark. You know what I mean? Enough said. So I, I think, and then we had Colorado too. Yep. Who well, shouts out to Shadora Sanders? That's what that means. Yeah, she yeah she's transferred. She made it clear. Yeah, yeah we'll yeah. say Sanders because yeah, Shador's her brother. I, I, yeah, I didn't mean to say Shador. I'm sorry. I apologize. Um, but what's the point I was gonna make? Oh, they um, you know that it, it 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 was it was atmosphere. You had all the stars out. The players. I mean, the best players. I, I want to say in the, in the, in the other than Paige. Paige wasn't here, and Juju wasn't here. But I mean, otherwise, in that had they would have did had they would have did that, they would have broke. They already <laughs> broke records because yeah. they they counted in real time the amount of viewership that the women's had versus the men's. Mm-hmm. I told somebody I wasn't trying to be funny. I didn't even know who won the men's tournament until I woke up one day and had to look it up on social media. <laughs> I knew I was glued into the women's tournament, not yeah. just because we were while um doing media, but just in general, mm-hmm. like. I think it was like 18 million viewership. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think more than that. Was it 19? About 19. To, it was yeah. between 18 and 20 million. I'll, I'll say yeah. that. Yeah. Freaking electric. So out of all the games we watched, let's let's do it like this. Big picture. What was the, who were the big winners? Obviously the people who went for, but if you had to pick, one of the best games that we saw out of the Sweet 16 and the Elite Eight, which one would you say? Um, the best game was probably out of, out of the bracket we saw. Mm-hmm. I liked I liked South Carolina and in, in, in Indiana. I liked that game. That that game was was more competitive than I thought it was. South Carolina was kind of blowing them out at the beginning, like in the middle of half. Remember, I told and you so it's coming. And then I, I'm, and I'm the, sorry, Indiana, Indiana came back swinging. Yeah, so it's, I said, here it comes. It's coming. You know what I'm saying? And and then Indiana came back and came back in the game, and they they fought and did what they did, and, and they, they brought it to within two. But then South Carolina just took over. The Camilla Cardozo effect. Because yeah. I believe that's the game, if I recall, where she had about – 20 some odd points and only played two and a half quarters if that's the correct game it was one of those games in the in the tournament where she only played two and a half quarters Mm -hmm. and tore it up yeah her skill set to change the course of a play Mm -hmm. is something you have to watch up close forget just you know because sometimes we look at the stats oh somebody had three blocks or certain it yeah. wasn't the stats it was looking at how people would get in the lane and see her and be like oh we we need to reverse this play yeah Don Staley said that when they won the tournament Camilla Cardoza would not let us lose yeah. and that was the theme of what we saw for South Carolina moving forward yeah facts let me also shout out Raven Johnson and Brio. <laughs> 
They 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 got like ice in their veins, dog. And the thing about that team, none of them are selfish. They all play their part. And I, I, I just salute to South Carolina because I think that they did a great job. Um, they showed us why they – I'm not shocked they won the title. I'm not shocked at all. No it disrespect felt, it to Caitlin like, Clark, but I, I – It felt yeah. like they had two starting fives. They had the starting five that they rolled out, but then the bench was a starting five. Yeah. That's what it felt like. Yeah, because uh, am I saying – old po- Poa? Is it – you know what I'm I talking about. Poa, the, yes. Yeah, yeah. She, she got – we we were seeing it. I was like, "Yo, this girl can like she was shooting, then, then, just then, chilling, then waiting, waiting for it to come." Yeah, yeah, you roll out Tessa Johnson. Yeah, and what she did, I was sitting there watching the game like she's going nuclear. Yeah, it was yeah. only nineteen points, but it was like, "Yo, I'm gonna take this <laughs> yeah, shot." Yeah. It was a it was a hard nineteen points. Yeah, man, and they just. I, that, I mean, the, the Iowa game when they played Colorado, I kind of, I, I ain't going to lie, I stopped typing after the second, third period. Yeah, that was I a was wrap. done. I was done. Yeah. yeah. Oregon State shocked me because they beat Notre Dame. That was kind of the game where I was shocked because yeah. I think everybody had Notre Dame moving past them. Yeah, it was going to be a great, it was, um, was going to be a great thing. It was going to be Oregon State. I mean, Notre Dame versus South Carolina. Mm-hmm. That's what everybody thought we were going to see. No, we didn't. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, we didn't. We didn't see that at all. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Her name is um the guard Hannah. Mm-hmm. Freshman guard. Very Hannah, hip. Yeah, I, I yeah, can't, I can't say pronounce the last name, name yeah. so I'll stick with Hannah. Okay. Moving forward for them, I like them next year. Okay. Now you got all the way to the sweet sixteen this year with Olivia Miles being on the bench. Mm-hmm. She should be fully, and I, I wish the best for her health wise. Mm-hmm. That knee should be one thousand percent healthy next season because we're like six six more months away. Yeah, yeah. With Hannah and Olivia Miles in the backcourt, oh my god! Because we saw Olivia Miles when she was a freshman. Yeah, we went to that tournament game when yeah. they played NC State in Bridgeport. In Bridgeport, yeah. yeah. She the way she whizzes that ball up and down the court. Mm-hmm. Now you got Hannah who you won't be leaning so much on her to take those shots next year. It'll be split. It, it, it will be the offense will be split evenly. So I'm interested to see how that's going to work next year between them two. But mm-hmm. I'm just going to go out on a limb and say they'll be back to the tournament next year. Right. I, I agree. I agree. I think I think Olivia Miles is the difference between them winning and losing certain games. And that game with Oregon State is probably a difference. Um, shouts out to Tamia Gardner too. That was part of she just said the transfer portal. She did. Yeah, she's transferring. Damn, because she was on stage. That's another thing with these 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 games and being in that bracket. Um, um, it, it's it's definitely, you know, it's, it's it's hard because at the end of the day, like you know, these players are now getting on stage, so they're on a big stage now. I want to do point out though. The one game, and like you said, we're not going to analyze all the games. So I think what was very disappointing, and what I'm going to say is, and it's nothing a shot because Kim Mulkey's an all time great coach. I was shocked that, that LSU played the way they played. Okay. And I think they, yeah. and I don't want to say like, I don't want to use the word cocky, but I think they were a little arrogant in thinking that we tied the game or oh, we're going to take it over. They never made the adjustments they were supposed to make. It felt like this mm-hmm. because I haven't seen my team. And and um the NBA do it. On paper, on paper, I'm not saying Iowa doesn't have ballers, but on paper, you were roll with LSU ten times out of ten. Facts. We were at the game, they ran them off the court literally. Yep. Every time there was a rebound, mm-hmm. Caitlin Clark was throwing the ball ahead. Yeah. She, that's how she got those twelve assists that easily. It yeah. wasn't just the points. Yes, she scorched them. If she wouldn't have had half of those assists, mm-hmm. that game might have won in overtime or LSU might have won with her scoring 40. Yeah. Yeah. That that was a problem defensively. I didn't understand the de- defensive schemes. Did you see what South Carolina did defensively on I her? I sure did. We're going to be aggressive. Half court. All the way up the floor. As soon as she got the half court, they was on her. And we're going to put our best defender on you. Yeah. Yeah. Old girl, HVL, Hannah Van Lith. She would have got taken out the game within the first quarter. Yeah. Yo, you you get on her even if you foul out. Yeah. Yeah. And by that, I mean uh, Flo J. Johnson. Yeah, you, you need to be on her or somebody else. And this is how – there were too many 
we're going to let her catch the ball, move off the screen, and then jump at her. That's one of the greatest shooters that we've seen. Yeah. You don't give her an inch. Yeah. We saw how UConn, even though UConn lost, they were guarding her very they good. Sure, they took her down. Yeah, they did. They, they slowed her down. It's just when they got to South Carolina, Raven Johnson took it personally. <laughs> she was like, oh, you were waving me off like you was doing yeah. this last year. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to lock you up and then hit those three-pointers. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I give it to her, man. I think that uh, I I don't know what Kim Mulkey was thinking. And that's not a shot at Van Litt. Why would you put that girl on her like that? You know Van Litt can't guard that girl. It's the equivalent of Van Litt is a great shooter, a great player, right? But it's the equivalent of Ray Lewis is a great linebacker. But you don't go put him on Jerry Rice. That's not going to work. That's he's he's a great linebacker, but he can't cover Jerry Rice. That's just not who he is and what he does. So it's like when you put Van Lynn on Caitlin, you just you know she can't guard her. That's not her thing. Her thing is a shooting guard. So her her even though she might have the mentality of what Caitlin has, at the end of the day, that's not who she is. And you, you just, you just what, knew. Uh, Kim said it when you asked her that question because yeah. you asked a very important question. We'll overlay the clip, mm-hmm. but you asked Kim Mulkey. And the presser to speak to Hannah Van Liff. And she says some very great words. Yeah. But to the point of her saying that she was trying to be a point guard this season. Like, Mm -hmm. you don't switch positions four years into your career on the biggest stage. Like, this is a game you're not going to be a point guard. Yeah. Yeah, you can't. Yeah, I, 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 that, that's what ended this season. I think that, I think. In the second half, I would have just said, yo, we're going to put flow on her and then you're going to start shooting. All game. Yeah, where you're going to start shooting. Because the one thing about South Carolina when they took it to Iowa, they kind of took – like she got hot at the beginning. I give it to Caitlin. She does what she always does. But once <laughs> once the game started going – Started getting slow. Yeah, started getting slow. They said, we're going to take you out of this game. And they made it clear. And then Cordosa, I mean, my God. Can she, we speak to that real quick? Yeah. We're going to have a discussion at the end of this podcast about the WNBA mock draft, which is on um, the draft is on Monday. The mock draft has been released. So we're, I'm going to give some some of my takes on the draft, mm-hmm. men's and women's. Um, I personally thought that she rose her stock throughout this tournament. Cool. That was just, that yeah. was, now yeah. we're going to talk about this when the mock draft, and you'll see why I'm saying it that way. We cover the um, WNBA since 2011. We're very familiar with the teams, not the big names, the actual teams, the players. Like we yeah. can go into depth with that conversation. Right. Her being six foot seven, she has somewhat of a mid range shot, but we saw how easy it was for her to score in bunches very quick. Facts. Then defensively, what she was doing. Yeah. <sighs> she's she's kind of like Liz Cambage without the drama. That's just what that is. I don't, I started, I don't, buddy. I still don't care. I'm speaking facts. That's just this Cam Beige was like is a great talent, a great player, but it's all the other stuff that you just don't want to deal with. Mm. Cordoza's complete opposite. She's she's a great talent, great player, but there's no not all that drama that's surrounding her. You know let what me, I mean? Let me also give credit to there's Two other names. Well, there's a lot of names we got to mention, but on that South Carolina team, freshman Malaysia Fuwali. I want to pronounce her name correctly. Yeah. Great discipline. Mm-hmm. Dawn has her playing the right way. She's going to have a stellar career. I see her mm-hmm. winning multiple awards in the SEC. And mm-hmm. the last one, I don't know if she's um, going to be a junior or a senior next year, but Ashlyn Watkins, they call her oh, Watkins. Yeah, yeah, Watkins is a beast. She has four dunks on the year. I was waiting for her to get lo- – <laughs> yo, yo, I was waiting for you to catch something in the tournament, yeah. man, because I watched her in high school, uh-huh. you know, just the YouTube stuff. Yeah. But I watched her in college last year and this year. She was mm. catching them. Yeah. She was catching them. Yeah, she's the one that got in Flo J's face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Started that fight. Um, yeah. yeah. What she does defensively and rebounding, there be games where she have eight points, but she got 20 rebounds. Mm. That's giving South Carolina second chance points. Yeah. She did that all tournament. She did that all year. Yeah. What she's going to be able to do after getting this championship and then training again, Mm. that South Carolina team coming back next year, you got Tessa Johnson that's coming back. Mm. Uh, Is Raven a senior or no? 
No, Raven's coming back. You got Raven coming back. You got Malaysia Fuwali, who's a, only a sophomore. You got Ashton Watkins. Yeah. Like, you got core pieces that were very important to that championship all coming back. And I'm pretty sure I'm just going to go out on a limb um, because all the positive publicity from Dolan Staley, there's going to be some people in the transfer portal that's going to want, that's going to be tripping over themselves to play to South Carolina. To South Carolina. Yeah. Yeah. They're going to have the pick of the litter in the transfer portal. Yeah. There's no way they don't get one five-star recruit that's going to transfer over there. Mm. So look for them to go back-to-back. Just going to mm. put that out there. Okay. Got you. Any other takes from the tournament? Um, Just that uh, uh, there's, there's some names. Let me let me say this. Um, I think it was great for the, for the, you know, of course, women's basketball. I think it was a great thing. I think it's going to continue to be a great thing. I think they need to keep the momentum going. We're going to get into later about why, how they need to do that for the upper, the upper level. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I just, you know, I can't put into words about how much advancement we've seen because we've been around doing covering tournament brackets. And it wasn't always 2015 like 15 or 16. Yeah. And even if you had to put two brackets in one city, it still wouldn't have been like this. Mm-mm. Where now it's it's kind of it's kind of gotten big. I mean, it, to be honest, and I will talk about this in another podcast, probably the next one. Like they were so they they had so much hype going into it. They took UConn and put them on the other coast. Now, they, now I, imagine how they put UConn in that bracket. Yeah. Oh yeah, my goodness. Was, yeah. Yeah. It, I, I'm just I'm just shocked overall. Shocked about that, but yeah, it was it was a uh, it was an experience. Definitely an experience, and it's a new day. It's a new day, man. It's the Dawn Staley era. Yeah. It's just well, Dawn Staley. You know, Mulkey's gonna have something to say about it next year. Indiana's clearly not going anywhere. And how good is Iowa gonna be without Caitlin Clark and that Big Ten that Indiana plays in? Because we saw how good Indiana is. Yeah, I think I think it's a wrap for Iowa. No yeah. disrespect, no yeah. disrespect for them, but yeah, that's pretty much over. And just based off the teams, you know, based off the, the I'm just based off what the, we saw in the bracket, based off it, you know, um, oh, who's the other team I was talking about? Oregon State. I mean, they clearly had something to say. You know, they ain't going nowhere. So. Juju Watkins. <laughs> <laughs> Juju Premier. Watkins for USC. Yeah, so it, it's just, it's just from what I saw in that bracket, it's gonna be, it's it's gonna, it's gonna be, be loaded again. again. Yeah, next like, year don't think just, be, don't think because the the W draft is all the names is going in. Tune in next year to women's yeah. college basketball. It's still gonna be popping. Yeah, Paige is coming back for a fifth year. Yep. Juju Watkins, Notre Dame got Olivia Miles remember, coming back with, with Hannah. AZ Fudd AZ. will be healthy. She's gonna. She's Paige Bucker's teammate. Mm-hmm. Women's basketball is gonna be popping again next year. So mm-hmm. look for them storylines. Facts. Real quick, where do we put Dawn Staley as a coach in collegiate basketball? She's one of the goats. She's coming as one of the goats. When it's all said and done, she'll be one of the goats. One in her career in the W. Yep. Got Olympic medals. Mm-hmm. National championships. Mm-hmm. Ended the season thirty nine and zero. Might go undefeated next year. Yeah. Yeah. That Cordoza loss is big, but like you said, with Watkins and them in there. You still got Watkins in the transfer portal. Yeah. I, like, I know they're probably going to wait for the news to leak, but I'm pretty sure there were a whole bunch of college athletes looking at them and looking at Don Staley saying, I want to be on that stage. Yeah. I want to play with Malaysia Fawali. I want to play with Raven Johnson. I want to play with Tessa. I want to play with Ashlyn Watkins. Yeah. And I want to play under Don Staley. Right. Mm-hmm. There's gonna be some big news. I don't know what, but there's gonna be some big news in the summer of who they're gonna get. Right, right. Okay. Before we leave women's college basketball, we gotta t- talk about Caitlin Clark and her positive impact with the eyes she brought to the game, because we've been covering college basketball way longer than two or three years, mm-hmm. mid majors and divisions, all that. Mm-hmm. Have we ever seen anything like this? No. No, there's been nobody. There's been nobody that's bringing what she's bringing, and we saw it up close and personal, not just on TV. We saw it everywhere she goes. There's a mob, dog. And there, there's never been a mob like that. Not no shots of Diana Taurasi, but even as great as she is, not not a mob like that. I've I've never seen. And that. maybe it's because the advent of social media. Because there was some social media when we were covering um in 2011 at W, but the eyes weren't there. 
Like, mm. remember how hyped that was of Maya Moore? We yeah. had, actually got to interview Maya Moore after they beat the Liberty, and she yeah. scored, I want to say her debut, she scored 19 or 20 points on the mm -hmm. Liberty. Right. We were there. Right. The social media wasn't, yeah, it was Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like that. Right. We remember because we were there in 2011. But right. Go ahead. No, I, I, I just, for what she's done for the game, plus she was winning, you know the the tension she, she won that championship. <laughs> yeah, you know and what she what she was doing. I mean, I I ain't never seen this. Not not like this. This is big, man. Didn't I tell you before we did the podcast? Uh, I started seeing um the WNBA teams each announcing like the Las Vegas Aces saying they're moving their arena in preparation of the not moving the arena. The they're game. moving the location of the game in preparation of playing the Indiana Fever because that's where she's um expected to be drafted. Yeah. Because their arena holds eight thousand, they're expecting twenty thousand. Mm. Insane. Let me. You know what else too? Let me. Let me say this. I and I, I'm hearing, and it is, some of it is hate. I, let me. Can I talk about that real quick? Go ahead. So you know, I guess with Caitlin Clark coming and Diana Taurasia made the comment like, "Well, that's cool. You're doing it against eighteen year olds, but there's grown women in here, right?" She should be retired. But go ahead. Oh yeah, that took the words right out of my mouth. And, uh, you know, Shannon Sharp and Stephen A. Smith alluded to it like, oh, I don't have a problem with what she said. I, I got a little problem with it because I think it comes from a place of hate. Can I say something? Go ahead. There was a time where we was covering the Liberty, and I never forgot when Skylar Dickens came our first year. I never forgot this. Talk about it. So Skylar Dickens comes. Jay-Z shows up to the game. Trust me, I never forgot this. The way they were guarding Skylar, this is just the first game. Now, I, at the time, remember, this ain't like, like now where we can – Download the WNBA app and watch every game. But for what that game for that day, I watched how they were aggressively going at Skyler. They were going after her. Do you understand what I'm mm -hmm. saying to you? In other games, I saw it. Because when she came out of the draft, she didn't have as big as follows as Caitlin, but she had a following. Oh, and I people remember. were watching her. And Rock Nation got the got to her. She had a big movement coming. And the WNBA players, I saw the hate. They were going after this girl. This girl was a kid, you know. I'm not just speaking, you know. She's a young lady. She was a kid. Yeah. And you going after this girl like, 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 like she taking something from you. She ain't taking something from you. Caitlin Clark's gonna add to the WNBA what she needs to. You've been here for 20 years, and for whatever reason, it ain't it ain't transcended over into what you what, what you what, what you added was a yeah. whole bunch of unnecessary hate, not just to yeah that situation, but even to Skylar Diggins and Phoenix. Don't, yeah. Don't think we ain't forget about that situation. Yeah. That, that you was, was part of the reason that. Phoenix tried to blackball Skylar Diggins. I'll leave that there, but yeah. we can go back. No, no, no. I, I get it. But my whole thing is she she keeps saying, like, like the thing is with Caitlin Clark, y'all, y'all better like embrace this. Cause this is and this goes into a bigger thing. And I know you said we're gonna do this in the end. I keep seeing, and this is the gem we're gonna drop. I'm seeing all these players come out of college, okay? I saw Diamond Battles come out last year, and she didn't make a team. And I think Destiny, there's not enough roster space. Destiny Henderson, same yep. thing. My whole thing is all these viewers are watching these kids coming out. So if they're watching a draft and you're drafting these guys, these kids, these young ladies, and you don't keep them on the team, then you lose the following. Yep. So the following doesn't follow with the WNBA because they're looking like, yo, we don't, they don't know Tarasi from 20 years ago. They don't care. I, even with Skylar right now, they don't care. They, I mean, it's only but so much you're gonna get with that. So you you need to take these kids and keep them. I think they got a team coming next year in Golden State. There's another team there. They need to aggressively. There's another team they're gonna open. Another franchise gonna open up. It was initially not to go into a whole history. It was initially supposed to happen before, right before COVID popped off. They were gonna open up two new franchises, but COVID hit. Yeah. So it just it destroyed up. everything. So now. Can I add one? Yeah. Not, not to disturb no, no, your train of thought. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be beneficial because I'm hearing that the partnership between the W and the TV contracts is just the last go. year. Yeah. And then they have to renegotiate. Yes. So if we get to this year and we see the viewership skyrocket because this draft class, yeah. because Caitlin Clark, Camilla Cardoza, mm -hmm. Angel Reese, um, Jackson, I can't pronounce her first name, it starts with an R. Rakia. Rakia Jackson. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And all those in the in the draft class, the Asian Fair from Syracuse, yes. who I hope Connecticut Suns picks her up. Yes. When, when we see the viewership rise because of this draft class, the W got some decisions to make. But go ahead. Yeah. So it's just the thing of you got it. You got to bring your following in there because they're not seeing these young ladies come in, and they're like, you know what? 
I'm not seeing these, these, these can, same girls. Can, can I add? I'm sorry. I know no, I keep interrupting. No, no, no. Go ahead. What did we see in the past when you brought up names? Um, we cover Connecticut. So we saw Alexis Morris right after LSU won a championship get drafted and cut. No longer are the days because of what we're seeing in women's basketball. Can we see top draft picks come out of college and get cut and not make the team? There was a lot of them. We remember seeing, um, I want to say her name is Ariva Westbrook from Connecticut. Mm-hmm. She she had to bounce around a few times to a few different teams yeah. after the, after she did good, did good in the tournament. Mm-hmm. We're going to have to stop this. Oh, we got top draft picks from from players who won big in tournaments and cutting them because mm-hmm. nobody's paying attention. They're paying attention now. Yeah. And let me tell you something else. I, Cause I see it. Yo, let me tell you, I was, I was watching a, I never forgot. We were, we were covering this Connecticut sun game. They were playing Seattle. That's mm-hmm. with Jewel Lloyd. That's why Scotty Dickens is now. I never, and I'm not going to say no names, but Jewel Lloyd was clearly frustrated. I never, it is just like the, some of the players just weren't into it. Mm-hmm. That wasn't a young team. It had a lot of veterans on it. And I think those vets, some of them had checked out. And I and I, I'm wondering why you don't have a bunch of young kids on that team, like coming from this draft to do what you got to do. And we're gonna talk about this at the end, but I know I keep interjecting. No, you no. heard what he said about young players. Mm-hmm. The LA Sparks, you have something very important to do this draft. You have mm-hmm. the number two pick and the number four pick. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna say that again. <laughs> LA Sparks GMs. Mm-hmm. You already have Zaya Cook. And you have some other players. You got a veteran on there. Mm-hmm. Um, Cheney, nah. Um, you got the Abuma K sisters. You got the, one, one of the Abuma K yeah. sisters. Mm-hmm. Zaya Cook. And yeah. then two picks in the top five. You better think about who you're drafting. We're going to touch on that, but go ahead. Yeah, no, it's just a situation where, uh, you know, uh, the point I was making. Um, but basically, it's just, they're going to, I mean, they were. You could tell Lloyd was frustrated. That's, like I said once again, that's why Skyler's there. You're gonna have to like bring these kids in. It's gonna have to bring a following. Some of these vets gonna have to go. I hate to say that, but you, some of y'all gotta go. And this is what Alexis Morris was saying when the internet turned on her last year. That's mm-hmm. the kid from LSU that mm-hmm. got picked up by Connecticut and then didn't make the team. And she made that comment. That was the controversy. What you just said. Yeah. Some of these vets have to make space for the younger players. And the internet turned on her and tried to make her seem crazy. But here we are a year later. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Alexis Morris. You were right. She plays yeah. for the Harlem Globetrotters right now. This is the point that Alexis Morris was making. Some of the vets, I'm not saying, oh, just kick all every 35-year-old out the league. Right. Some of them are going to have to start making space for these young, talented players. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to have to happen. And like I said, when they open this next franchise and they have a new franchise coming after that, You'll start to see more and more. Like I said, it'll slowly build. They got to remember, and Isaiah Thomas made a good point. He said, yo, when the NBA, he said, you got to think about, if you go back and look at where the NBA was at when it was 25, 26 years old, they were not popping like that. So it's, this is going to take time, and you got to be patient, but you also got to meet them halfway. So I think bringing in this new franchise to Golden State next year is going to be a great thing. I think that whoever they, wherever city they pick for the next franchise – because they said they're going to they're going to add two. So one is in Golden State. I don't know. They didn't decide the next one. I'm getting a feeling Toronto is going to be one of them. But, you know, um they need to add these teams. You're going to have to like you you can't you need keep bare having minimum it. two more teams. Yeah. And there's that, and, too many. Yeah. Think about next year when Paige comes out. Right. And that draft class. Then in four years when Juju Watkins, because, I mean, three more years. And by that time, the game would have been elevated. And it's going to be involved. You got Ashlyn that's going to come out as a, as a high flyer. Yeah. You got other players. Um, There's a kid coming right now that's committed to Duke. Um, Her name is Toby. Uh, everybody knows who I'm talking about. The Duke commit for women's basketball. She's mm-hmm. dunking with two hands with ease in high school. And she's mm-hmm. listed at 6'3". So in four years, when her, Juju Watkins, and all of them comes... By then, yeah, you're gonna have to have the roster space. Mm. You're gonna have it's gonna be too much talent to pass on. Right, you, you're not gonna be able to look at this girl and say, "And eh, we don't got roster space. Send her to whatever across mm. seas, and you lose out on her following." Right. Wow. So I, I'm I'm with you, man. Like I said, this they're gonna have to take this to the next level, and I think the WNBA is now seeing it. And they know they got to pick up on it. I think 
But I, I just one more thing to say. I don't think they saw it coming. Not this fast. They knew it was coming. They just didn't know how fast it was going to come. And especially th- and this is where media comes in. Especially play. not this, not to make excuses, but see, COVID happened, and they said we're going to have to, you know, pick up this game and gradually progress it. But it just it went like a swarm. Like it, it's, I woke, I looked up, and it's like a swarm. You know what I mean? I'm gonna give credit to all the media that actually do the work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're a small media, and people will throw shots. Oh, yeah, I ain't got five hundred thousand followers, but mm-hmm. we actually done the work. Yes. I can flash a media credential right now that says 2011. Mm-hmm. Me and you have been in mid majors and bigger conferences in Division One since Correct. 2015. Correct. Every year, I'm telling you about somebody. Yeah. There was a girl that played for um, Stanford. Mm-hmm. Uh, let me pull up her name right now. Not talking about Cameron, are you? Nope. Okay. Give me one second. I'll edit this out. <laughs> <laughs> Fran Belivi. Okay. That was the girl that was catching crazy dunks like Clyde Drexler. Right. But she decided at the end of her career she wanted to pursue her career in medicine. I was saying about her, if she comes into the WNBA, oh my goodness. It's over. The following she had, she was boot, she was cocking back on cats in college. Damn. Yeah, like one step, boom. Mm-hmm point I was making was there's always been a year where I said, Hey, I see what's coming. They need to get ready for it. Right. No, you, I, I, I can attest to that. You, you, Yo, from day hey, one. you see this girl coming out of high school. Yep. I'm telling you about the, um, the girl from Duke. I got her name. Her name is Toby Fournier. I can't pronounce the last name, but it's French. She's from mm-hmm. Canada. This girl is six, three dunking with ease with two hands. Like she's getting her elbows up on the rim. Mm-hmm. You don't think they, and I'm not the person that's so dunk thirsty in the WNBA. I know the game evolved um, beyond dunking, right. but I'm saying the following she has in four years when she when she mm-hmm. gets to the league, the following she's gonna take with her. Right, they want to see somebody catch an alley oop on somebody's head. Mm-hmm. She's gonna be one of the ones that's gonna do it. Mm-hmm. You know, but because we do the work and we didn't just start watching college basketball two years ago. And we've been around for like eight to 10 years in in college and 14 years within the W. We've seen the progress. I've been, I've seen it after COVID. I said, something's about to happen in the right. next two or three years. Right. Here we are. Mm-hmm. Okay. Facts. I agree with you. I definitely agree with you. Do we got any more college talk? Not right now. I think the next, the next episode, we're going to get heavy into shouting out everything we saw at the end of the season. Mm-hmm. Teams from mid majors to to big time. We'll, we'll talk about that the next episode. We just kind of getting everybody up to par of what we've been doing. Mm-hmm. So if you want to transcend over to the, give me a second. Mm-hmm. And one 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 thing I'm gonna shout out before we transition. Shout out to Oakland City University women's basketball and head coach for Carl Malone. I want to get you on the podcast to interview you. Been following. I've been following the uh, the college game and your team for the last two seasons. You're doing good over there. Yeah. Keep doing your thing. Okay. So let's transition. I wanted to talk about your opinions because you're very great in football. When I send you the news Thank on you, the sir. NFL banning the hip tackle, they're banning the hip tackle. Yeah. You can't hit somebody in the hip. That's the news that came out. That's I mean, been a big we're controversy. Gonna, we're gonna basically get the two hand touch at this point. I, I don't know what else. We, we, so what? You you can't hit your helmet against the hip. So how are you supposed to tackle somebody? The hip tackle. They're trying to ban it, or is banning it. I, I I think that. Well, I hope they're trying, and it's not because it's not making any sense. No, it's it's the it, next review. Da, 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 da. Yeah, it will be implemented. It's now 15 yard unnecessary roughness penalty. So it is banned. The hit every, tackle is banned. Every, every hit is an unnecessary. Every time you tackle somebody, it's an unnecessary roughness. You can't put your weight on a quarterback when you hit him. You can't, you can't, I mean, hell Can you, we, go ahead. There, there's a deeper thing that I'm 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 about to I'm about to spark something for you. Mm. What does this mean for those defensive players now? It's gonna be hard for them to do their job. Not just do their job, get paid. Yeah. Those yeah. linebackers, those defensive players, mm-hmm. those players that's making forty million dollars because how ill they are on the defensive end. Yeah, you taking away first, you can't hit them across the field no more like you used to back in the days. So yeah, now you're banning hip tackles. Mm-hmm. Some some of the rules I understood, but this one is like, come on, man, 
the hip tackle. Do you so the hip is like right here. Yeah. So how you not? How you? What you supposed to do? This is getting ridiculous. Like it's getting real ridiculous. This is why you see certain quarterbacks. I forgot who used it the best, but they would fake slide and then keep running. Yeah. You're going to start seeing players do that. Oh, I'm dropping my hip. I'm about to go down. You can't touch me. Yeah. And then start running again. It's, it's, right. it's going to be weird. It's getting a little goofy. And I think it's, it's it's just like with the quarterbacks. You can't lean your weight on them if you grab them. So, I mean, of course, it, oh, he broke away. No, he ain't break away, man. You just couldn't, you couldn't do what you wanted to do. I, I think, I mean, it's, 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 no disrespect, because I know about the brain injuries, everything, you know, the nasty we, part yeah, of the game. We talked about that. But, you know, we, and we get that part. But at some point, this is a man's game. And you got to be a man and man up and take whatever is going on out there. Now, this dirty place. Now, let me say something. You worried about a hip. You ever seen somebody's knees? So now they're going to start hitting the knees even more. And that's the last thing as a player you want to happen to you. So you you getting popped off in the knee. Because because of some stupid rule. And mind you, knees are getting jammed up and hurt. Like you can't do that, man. I don't know what they what they do. Can I audible? Yeah, go ahead. So in real time, I'm a Boston Celtic fan. We're gonna come back to the NFL, but we just <laughs> oh. got some breaking news. Okay. Woj just dropped the bomb. So for us Boston Celtics, we just locked up Drew Holiday. I, I don't know if you could get this in focus. Can you get this in focus? Mm. <laughs> I'm getting it closer and closer. Mm. After after arriving in a blockbuster trade, Boston Celtic guard Drew Holiday has agreed to a four year, hundred and thirty five million dollar deal. Damn. We're time stamping it. What's today's day? April what? April tenth. April tenth. This is a Wednesday. Woj we'll just dropped the bomb for us Celtic fans that we just locked up Drew Holiday for the next four years, and we got Chris Chris Stapp Porzingis. Along with Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum, yeah, I think Derek right White, Peyton Pritcherson, and a few others. Let's get ready for that A-team title. Boston clearly saying we're all in. We're all in. Yeah, Celtics, we're all in. Yeah. At the Lakers, <laughs> go take that. <laughs> Back to the NFL. Go ahead, man. Go ahead. You can bring it up. You can bring. It up. I'm done talking about the hip tactical. Oh no, we got another NFL topic. Mm-hmm. So we're still within the NFL. But we did a take in the beginning of the NFL season where we were talking about our picks, conferences, and so forth. And one take that we did was Azar, my partner, said this was it for the Buffalo Bills. The window that their closed. window was closing yes, if I they did. didn't do something this season. And mm-hmm. we were met with, eh, I don't really know what y'all talking about. Mm-hmm. So then last week, the news released that Stefan Diggs got traded to the Houston, Texas. So now I want you to take it away <laughs> with the great <laughs> Buffalo Bills. Well, the Buffalo Bills announced that they did trade Stephon Diggs. And it was clearly an issue that was going on. Now, um, I mean, we all saw it. Every time they 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 got into it, like Stephon Diggs would get into it with Josh Allen, they weren't seen eye to eye. I don't think it was a personal thing. I think it was just a frustration thing. I'm gonna tell you why this 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 the window is closed for right now. Brandon Bean comes out in the press conference, and his comments were, the one thing I took from his press conference was, um, "We are we better today? Probably not. That <laughs> he said, he said, but I'm confident of the guys we have on the roster, and I'm confident of the staff that we have upstairs that helps me have us ready to roll into September, right? I didn't get that. Could you try again? <laughs> that was Siri. <laughs> <laughs> yo, that is funny, yo. Right so, on cue. So, so basically, he he's basically saying what I got from that was he said he said with Stefan he said you know we're gonna not this year but we're gonna free up a lot of money next year. Plus the draft class of receivers that are coming out this year is gonna be big. So he's basically looking at it. I don't want to say they're not really pushing the reset button, but they're trying to retool up for another run. Because they gave Josh Allen all this money, and you can't do it with and have him and Diggs taking up all the money. Mind you, they don't let go of um, Tredavious White, and they let go of one of the safeties. I think not both safeties. So this this Stephon Diggs trade was just basically the nail in the coffin. I don't think they're making any more release. They let Gabe Davis, the second best option, walk out the door. They let Stephon Diggs. They just traded him. 
They let Tredavious White. They let uh, Hoyer. I'm, and somebody else I'm missing here. But they they let a few guys walk out the door. Now, the thing is, and he's talked about it, Brandon Bean, he's, he was saying, like, yo, we're going to retool. So they had the tight ends with, with Cade or whatever. This is the thing. And James Cook. The thing is, is that I think the reason why they did it was, I don't know if you noticed, know Stephon Diggs was getting over the first six games. He had over 100 yards receiving. The last 11 games, he had maybe 50. So they were hardly throwing him the ball. He's on the sideline getting frustrated with Josh Allen. Do you think that's a money situation? I do. Because we don't heard from certain players in basketball <laughs> and in football that the GMs make a call so you don't reach your incentive. Yes. I I think it's I think it's a thing of we know we gotta let this guy go and and, and let's see if we can win without him. So what they were doing was running James Cook, which was a great option. And it was great, but you had Kansas City in your home, and you still couldn't beat them. Had them in your home. Remember the Chiefs. The Chiefs. Who did they play this year? Who am I? Who did they play in the championship game? Who am I missing? Mm-hmm. It was. It, I know it was. I know it was Detroit and San Fran, Kansas City and uh, wasn't Buffalo because Kansas City had a championship game. Talking about for the championship? The AFC, yeah. But I'm trying to think. It's right in the top of my my, my head, man. Um, do, 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 do. Mm, Bengals? No, no, no they didn't make the playoffs. I'm sorry. Baltimore. Baltimore. So they they they, no, they, they, 17 they, right. 10. they they play Baltimore. But what I'm saying is, is you could you had Kansas City in your home. You had Patrick Mahomes at his weakest, and you still couldn't beat him. Still couldn't beat him. So I think Brandon Bean is looking at, like, yo, we spending all this money, and this is what we're getting is, is sideline rants and, and my star quarterback, franchise quarterback, getting into it. Now let me tell you why this is this might be a, a, a bad move, and I, I, I called it when the window was closed. I told you last year the window was closed. Correct that, mm-hmm. right, right or wrong. The window was closed because at the end of the day, you know Miami's looking, sitting there laughing like, oh, you guys just let go of your best receiver. Yep. So they're looking at the Bills like everybody else is going to look at the Bills. We do not have to worry about your number one receiver, Stephon Diggs. All we have to really worry about is Josh Allen, your running game, and your two tight ends. Watch what we do with that. Mm-hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I think maybe McDermott being the defensive-minded coach, know he's going to have to step it up, but you took some losses on defense too. So now you got Miami, who's in your conference, who's just as good, right? And except they get to the plus, but I think that's going to change this year. You got the Jets, who are then definitely going to try to come back, right? You got the whole AFC North. I'm going to say four names. Shout out to the Steelers: Joe Burrow, Russell, Russell Wilson, Wilson, Lamar Jackson, and and um, Russell Wilson again. No, <laughs> no, I'm not saying that. And and, and Deshaun Watson. Those, those that that's just in one division, right? Yep. And then you got the West, and you know what you and we all saw what Houston just did, right? So you got and, and you got Kansas City Super Bowl champs. You know, we, we all know what the Raiders are coming, right? I just want to say if you're Buffalo, what what are you gonna do? You're in the toughest conference. No disrespect to NFC. Green Bay's coming, but they're still a little young. Detroit, we'll see if they can get over the hump. You're not in that type of conference. You're in a conference with about there's about at least two Super Bowl like teams in two conferences. There's one conference that all four teams are that great, and there's another conference where there's another team right behind you chasing. I I don't know what you're gonna do. I really don't. And trust me, if Indy's quarterback, starting quarterback doesn't well, get hurt. Well, hey, they were telling coming. me in the comments that because they freed up all this cap space, they're gonna attract what? Free agents. You you gave your greatest offensive weapon up to replace him with what that's what i don't get just because you have cap space they're gonna create they're gonna create cap space next year they're gonna go plus brandon bean said that they're not that's done what I'm yet asking who are they gonna get over there i guess they're gonna get some they're gonna go in that draft they're gonna get that receivers can i say something does that make sense can logically I, can i say something go ahead they gave lamar jackson that money right mm-hmm they said we're gonna draft for sean bateman because we think he's gonna be a, a, a good receiver that can put with lamar jackson uh, and we, I haven't hey, heard of him. Right. So Zay Flowers comes out the draft mm-hmm. this year. We've Great. stepped it up, right? Yeah. But here what I'm saying, my point is, is that you can't just rely on the draft. Yeah. yeah. But Buffalo's window has officially closed. 
they're done. So, so they bring in somebody else, they're done. Right? Now, let's go on the flip side. So Stefan Diggs is going to go to Houston, where they're already like a top team. This can go either way, and I'm going to say this. It looks good on paper, but okay. let me make this clear, okay? What's your prediction me, for the let Houston, me make Texas? The, let me make this clear. Indy's good, too, because they, they, they nobody's paying attention to them. They got that kid in there. He just got hurt, right? So Indy's good. Jacksonville ain't going nowhere neither. Okay, Jackson, I'll give you Jacksonville. Lawrence, okay. Right? okay, so let me go here with this. Now you got you 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 coming in there and Houston's good. You gotta remember Tank Dell was a beast last year. Trust me, he was on my fantasy team. And I think Nico Collins. Mm-hmm. And then you just picked up Joe um not Joe Mixon. Yeah, Joe Mixon, right? From the Bengals. So all these weapons, the ball has to get spread around. Now you was crying in Buffalo when Josh Allen wasn't really showing you the ball like that. What you think you're gonna pull up there in Houston? I think that quarterback is going to hit him. Okay. That's just my honest, I'm that's just, my honest opinion. I'm just saying what what just happens if there's too few games that, yo, Tank is, is balling, I'll Nico's say like balling. This. Mm-hmm. I'll say it like this. I also under the guys that went in cures, things like that. So if you're in a situation mm-hmm. where you look like you're about to win a division, you might not bug out like where you were on Buffalo because what were they winning in Buffalo? Nothing. Nothing. They're winning. So they're winning AFC East hey, conferences. Okay. There is. What, what, what do you do? <laughs> you, you, you know where I'm going with this. Yes, yes. So like in basketball, you let's say you you average, for example, they there's a discussion about what if Carmelo Anthony would have went to the Detroit Pistons, how great they would have been and how much right. more they would have won. Right. The flip side to that is had he went there, he went early in his career, he wouldn't have been dropping those 30 and 40 point games. He would have probably been a, a, a third or fourth option. Right. And basically the point I'm getting at is he would have took a lesser role, but they would have won more. Right. Same thing with Stefan Diggs in Houston. Yeah, there might be a couple games where you're not going to get those passes, but mm-hmm. if you're winning, mm-hmm. I think that cures what he was going through with Buffalo, right? if that makes sense. Let me say this, too, about that with the Houston thing. Just like in Buffalo, there's a clock ticking. I just want to so make that clear. Okay, so for, for the what, what division are they in again? They're in the AFC South. So for the AFC South, what's the Houston, Texas clock now that they got Stephon Diggs? With C.J. Stroud, um, I want to say like two years. That's it. You only two. giving them a two year window. Yeah, two years. You gotta remember, Stroud. What is this? This is year one, right? Mm-hmm. So I think it's the five year deal. They know Houston's in the back of their mind. I'm gonna tell you why they're doing this now. They know they have to do it now. This kid is like Josh Allen. This kid is on a a, a a rookie deal. At some point, if he keeps continuing where we think he's going, gotta by year him. three, you gotta pay this kid. You gotta you, pay can't, you gotta give him the money. So if you gotta pay this kid. Oh, you, okay. some, we're going to have to make cuts. Going. You see what Buffalo's going through now? Okay. We paid you. So now you're going to have to step up with whatever we give you around because we can't go back and do it. It's the same thing with um, who 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 got that money? Daniel Jones in New York. They they had they, they, you. God. We're going to have to work. <laughs> you're going to have to work with. We gave you what you There's wanted. There's going to be a ESPN movie on that yeah, in, in we, 10 to 15 years. We, we gave you what you wanted. So I think the point is, is with, 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 with C.J. Stroud, we we, uh, this is the window because once once you come back around the corner asking for money and we already see the money that uh, who who got the high, with Lamar Jackson guy mm-hmm. we already saw that it's only gonna go but up, right? Mm-hmm. So at some point you got to pay this kid. So they got to make their window now because since it's just like Cincinnati they know they got to pay Burrow. They it's coming. You can't you can't avoid it. You, it is coming. So if, if you got this kid. Let's try to just go out and win it now because we know we got to pay this kid. Tank Dell and all them, everybody's going to want their money. Somebody's going to have to go. It ain't just somebody. A few people are going to have to go. So th- I give it two years. Mm-hmm. I know that sounds crazy, but I give it two years because if, if the next two years Houston does what they do and they're banging on the door and Kansas City's getting in their way, it's, it's like mm, we, have to, we have to go all out now because once we give him his money, I don't know what we're going to do. All right. And we're going to have to make some tough decisions so that they, they can afford to get those guys now. 
But once I, I guarantee it, Stroud's going to do what year two, year three. So it's the, we're in 2024, 20, 2025. 20, mm-hmm. So let's say he does his thing 2024. 20, then he does it even more in 2025. And he's got Kansas City like like on their heels. You know, like he's like he's coming. Like, yeah. oh boy, like we gotta go through Stroud and him again, right? <sighs> what are you gonna do? You, and his agent is gonna come around and say, Look, we've been here for three, four years now. You can franchise us if you want, but at some point you're gonna have to cut a check. So you either give us this money now. What we what we owed or what the top quarterback is, or you franchise us, and I promise you we're gonna we're gonna walk out that door the minute that year is up with the franchise tag. Mm. So they know they're gonna have to commit. That's 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 why they 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 traded away Joe Mixon in Cincinnati, and they're about to let T Higgins go. They franchise him, but I think they're gonna let him walk out the door too, because Burrow's gonna want his money. Good luck with that. You're gonna have to give it to him. So 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 yes, this trade is a good trade for both teams, but I am right. We are right. We both said it. You agreed with me. Your Buffalo's windows closed. And I wasn't wrong, was I? Night night. Yeah, facts. A lot of things we be saying in here, we don't seem like we know what we're talking about, but somehow it's like about happening. three to six months. Yeah. But always, catch you always have, just wait for it. Just Play wait for it. Like just just <laughs> Steve A says the Kelly. Just wait for it. Don't wait for it. Just be patient. So I want to briefly touch on the NBA draft. And only a few points. WNBA draft? No. Oh, the NBA draft. The NBA okay. draft, okay. and then we're going to go to the W. We're going to okay. talk about both of them. Okay. But there's um pretty much a few storylines, so I'm only going to pull two out. Real quick, nepotism within the NBA. So you know where I'm going with this. One of the main storylines for this year's NBA draft is Bronny James, the son of LeBron James, put his name in the NBA draft. Oh, boy. While <laughs> still being eligible to play college basketball there's a way you do that so yeah. he's still eligible to hit the transfer portal so it caused some controversy because basketball heads who are not i guess close with lebron people who are unbiased yeah. are clearly saying Bronny james isn't ready for the nba agreed not talking about the players and lebron's buddies like damon uh like draymond green is saying oh he's going to be a great pro talking about unbiased opinion if you watched him, he needs two or three years development in college. Yeah. Kind of like Scotty Pittman Jr. did at Vanderbilt. Go mm-hmm. watch him at Vanderbilt and why he's such a good pro now in the NBA. Mm-hmm. Anyways, so is nepotism a good thing in sports? There's a difference when we talk about businesses. We all know we're building this business. Let's say Envy Online is worth $10 million next year. I'll put that in the air. Yeah. There you go. Of course, mm-hmm. we're going to hire our kids and pass them down something. But in sports where you have to show and prove, is nepotism a good thing? No. No. It's do not do you think this is a good move for Bronny James no. to get picked up by an NBA team right now? No. Just because they're saying they might take a chance on LeBron Who, James. Who's going to Who's gonna take a chance? He, he's he's going to, because nobody's going to, I don't think nobody's going to take him. Unless it's just the Lakers, I don't, I don't. I don't think nobody's gonna take him. I'm not being funny. I really don't. Who, who's gonna take him? A team that wants to get LeBron James last okay, two years. But the Lakers. Okay, so let's just say this: he's coming, right? And it's LeBron's last two years. I think the Lakers, they'll probably make it clear, like, yo, we'll go with him, and he'll just. I'm. I'm not trying to be cruel or mean. Look, what? What? Is, how many championships is LeBron? He's gotten one. And ever since, we, ever since we came out of COVID, it's been like they got to the Western Conference Championship last year. I'll give it that. I will say this. If this year they get there or whatever, you're going to have to clear a spot. And I understand it. That's the damage. So, 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 so you got to have to clear a spot. you got to clear. And you're going to have him training his son and, and all that. You know, nobody better than LeBron to train you. Yeah, he's a goat. And, right. But, you know, it's, it's this. I'm wondering is this going to come back to bite? Like if you if you bring him in there and it don't work out and it's just because he wants to play with his son, you gotta go over there, man. We we'll, we'll send you so wherever here, you want. So here's you can play another with him. thing: nepotism in the NBA is a new. We done seen brothers. Mm. I think J.R. Smith had his brother get a roster spot back in the early 2000s. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously the new one with Giannis and his brother. His brother's occupying a spot over in Milwaukee. Yep. And so forth. So it's not that it's new. We done seen it before. Steph Curry and Seth Curry. 
yeah. brothers, even though I feel like Seth Curry earned his spot. He did. Yeah. Um, Doc Rivers and his son Austin Rivers. But people yeah. forget people people forget the amazing year he had at Duke. Mm-hmm. He earned his spot. Mm-hmm. People can throw that up all day long. Right. He had one of the best high school hoops mixtape of all times. Mm. Go check that out. Right. My opinion with Bronny James is I think he can be a pro, but here's the problem. Mm-hmm. He's listed at 6'3". The reality of it is in college, they always list him an inch or two taller. Okay. They were saying Zion Williamson is 6'7", six, 6'8", six, his whole dupe. He gets in the NBA, NBA um, scouting. They say he's six foot five and a half. Wow. 6'6 six, six with shoes on. Mm-hmm. Ronnie James is more likely 6'1 and a half, 6'2". At point guard position in the NBA. Those point guards now are 6'4 and up. He doesn't play primarily point guard. He plays off ball combo guard on the wing. Mm. The combo guards are between 6'4 and 6'9". Oh, what position Lord. does Bronny play in the NBA to make this make sense right now? You put him at point guard. Yeah, I keep comparing him to Drew Holiday. He's not Drew Holiday. <laughs> not yet. Yeah. Maybe in about five or seven years, but now, not yet. Right. Pit him on the wing. Who is he guarding? What six foot five, six six wing he's gonna guard on the NBA on the NBA level? The main point I want to make is what you said. Mm-hmm. You said occupying a spot. Yeah. The only way that this works is if it's a storybook ending, and we can't predict the future. Maybe right. God knows something we don't. Mm-hmm. Maybe LeBron goes out and look what the Lakers won in the championship. Then it makes all the sense in the world, and it, it makes us look like haters. Yeah. To me, that's the only way this works. If the Lakers take Bronny and somehow they they have an inside meet and say, we're about to go get another all-star over here mm-hmm. with D'Lo, Anthony Davis, and whatever else, we're going to force us to get <laughs> – we're yeah. pretty much going to force us to get to the championship. Right. Outside of that, I see this as being a way for him to boost his draft stock in the transfer portal. Okay. Maybe you get some scout, oh, yeah, Bronny worked out with us, and he was doing so amazing. Duke might see that and be like, all right, come over here. <laughs> Great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I I, I, I personally, I, I just think. And, and Now, if LeBron was like, if we know they were knocking on the door, like, you know, like how he's been at Miami, we mm-hmm. knew it was coming. Um, made his first LA, we knew it was coming. That's one thing. You trying to like uh, we don't we're not sure where you gonna be at you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. and it's kind of tough to see that you know but I, I don't know man maybe 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 you know only you only you can can believe in you yeah you know what I'm saying so I mean like I said if he's he pulls it off he pulls it off let mm-hmm. me go here before we end up with our last um topic out another storyline. Um, out of this year's NBA draft, obviously, it's the names entering the draft and the mixture of the European players mm-hmm. versus the American-born players and people trying to figure out who's in this draft. So I'm just going to stick with the point guards in the top 20. Mm-hmm. There's a few point guards coming out. Um, Isaiah Collier, Rob Dillingham, Reed Shepard, and just outside the lottery is a kid from Providence named Devin Carter, son of of NBA player Aaron Carter. Oh, wow. So the reason why I bring that up is these are some of the top point guards in the draft. Isaiah Collier, who played for USC, Reed Shepard, who played for Kentucky, Robert Dillingham, who played for Kentucky, and Devin Carter, who's the Big East player of the year from Providence. You want to know what's the difference in that list? Hmm. Three of those players are freshmen coming out while Devin Carter played three years in college and developed every single year. Mm. You go, we actually got a chance to see him in person yep. when they played Rhode Island and they Molly Wap Rhode Island. <laughs> yeah, so did. ever since we saw that last year, I've been mm. keeping up watching the games and watching him. Mm-hmm. Every every single stat mm-hmm. from field goals, three point percentages, defense, he's developed. My take on this is for him to be outside of the lottery mm-hmm. and falling anywhere from 13, they have him projected between 13 and 17. Mm. It's borderline criminal. My hot take is out of all those I named, out of Isaiah Collier, Reed Shepard, Rob Dillingham, and Devin Carter, he's the best guard, he's the best point guard out of that list. 
take that for whatever you have it. Mm-hmm. Those other three guards are within the top 10 are lottery picks. He's falling anywhere from 13 to 18. Mm-hmm. Develop in college because I'm telling you, whatever team picks him up has a gym. Whatever team picks up Devin Carter from Providence, you got the best point guard in the draft. Those other high names are going to need years to develop or mm-hmm. they're going to need a specific team to suit them. Mm-hmm. Devin Carter's ready right now. Right. That's my take. Okay. Last but not least, let's finish this off with talking a little bit about the W draft. Mm-hmm. So did you pay attention to any of the mock drafts for the WNBA? Yeah, I saw I saw one. Um, of course, Caitlin Clark was the number one pick going to Indiana. Obviously. Um, I think Cordosa was going to the Sparks at number four. No, that changed. Oh, it did? That changed. Uh, I know Daisha yeah. Fair was, was picked to go 10th at Connecticut. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know where Angel was, was planning to go to, what, to Minnesota? Minnesota or Chicago. It's up in the air. No, if she goes to Chicago, that's okay. I, 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 I can't see Minnesota, man. Why? Wait, what, what's wait, that, that, that ain't going to work. That's that's a recipe for disaster. That's not a shot at the links. I just don't see it happening. So where's this at? Okay, they released the ESPN released a new mock draft. Number one, Caitlin Clark, Indiana Fever. Number two, Cameron Brink, LA Sparks. Number three, Carmela, Camilla Cardoza with the sh- Chicago Sky. Wow. Number four, Rakia Jackson with the LA Sparks. Aaliyah Edwards with the Dallas Wings. JC Sheldon with the Washington Mystics. I want to say Isabel with the Minnesota Lynx. And then Angel Reese with the Chicago Sky. Yeah, that sounds better. Alyssa P- Alyssa Pally with the Dallas Wings and DeAsia Fair with the CT Suns. Yeah. I'm going to say it like this. Mm-hmm. From what I just read, you better get this right, L.A. Sparks. <laughs> you <laughs> have two picks within mm-hmm. the top five. So if Cameron Brinks is your pick, I hope it makes sense to pick Rakia Jackson at four and not Angel Reese or Camilla Cardoza mm-hmm. for obvious reasons. Right. You're rolling the dice. I hope you get it right. If though, if I know mock drafts, we t- take with a grain of salt, but sometimes they're accurate. Yeah. So if the LA Sparks don't pick Angel Reese in that big market with her brand, what we mm-hmm. talked about, mm-hmm. bringing brand attention to LA, mm-hmm. I hope you are correct. Right. What are your thoughts on it? Um. Oh, the Liberty can't do it because they uh, got, got all that star power. Um. I'm surprised. What? Who did Washington take? Washington is selected to take J.C. Sheldon. I don't know where she's from. I I I like what I'm hearing, except for they say I, I'm surprised Cordoza. They, they're projecting her to drop to four, three, three. Chicago Sky. Who's in, who's at her again? Cameron Brink. Yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> like Me neither. It, that that that's not. Uh, no. This is what I'm saying. Chick- yeah. L.A. I hope for your sake you're correct. Yeah. This is one of those make or miss drafts. Yeah. If you whiff on this at the at the plate, this mm-hmm. is going to end up bad for you because L.A. is a big market city. And now they're saying where is she going to go? Cordoza? Chicago Sky. And go down there with Angel. Yep. Oh, boy. You, you see where I'm going with this? Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. I don't think he was picking up on it when yeah, I kept saying yeah, who yeah. the Chicago Sky is slated to pick. Yeah. They're slated to pick both <laughs> yeah. oh, Camilla Jesus. Cardoza Lord have mercy. and Angel Reese. Now that, to any for any coach out there, that that's like that's that's like a kid in a candy shop. That's who I start my team with. Oh, I'm saying that's so much fun. What about what and, and even the one thing I do hope is Dias Fair makes it with Connecticut. I do too. Because after every do after all the changes they made, they're gonna need her. Mm-hmm. They need some shots. And and they I think, you know, with Brianna Jones coming back from the t- t- Achilles tip, you just never know what type of player she's gonna be. Yeah. So, you know, I mean you, you can't bank on that. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So they they're gonna need fair because they let Rebecca Allen Rebecca Allen walk Who's out that a door. Shot maker. Yeah, who made critical shots. And they, for tra- you. And they traded Natasha. Natasha's over, I wanna say um Minnesota. Oh Jesus. Yeah. So you you didn't just let her go, you let Natasha go as well. Yeah. Who we yeah. saw how she was a spark off that off that bench or even when she did start. Facts. 
Aaliyah Edwards. I'm shocked she's coming out. Maybe she's yeah. a graduate. But she, gra- I'm wondering if she was a graduate. Four years. Four years. Because I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering why she ain't just trying to. Go. They did make the final four. I'm mm-hmm. just, you know, I'm wondering. But her page and fud, on the, whoo. I would have came back for another year. Domination. The only thing that would have gotten their way is South Carolina. Mm-hmm. That's it. I, I really think so. And I like, like as you said, I agree with you with DeAsia Fair to yeah. the Connecticut Sun. I hope she makes the roster. Yeah. Because we see how tough it is for anybody, even when you win a championship, to make a roster. So mm. I hope because if she makes the Connecticut roster, I'm going to say this, that will be development heaven for her. Mm. Yeah. You see how she's a bucket in college. Yeah. You will be behind one of the best point guards in the W, which is Alyssa Thomas. Yeah. Am I pronouncing her name correctly? Yes, you are, sir. Who we saw should have been the top two. I think she fell within the top three of MVP, MVP yeah. votes. Yeah. With all those triple doubles she was effort, effortlessly doing, doing yeah. all season. You will mm-hmm. be developed behind her. Then off the bench, you have to battle with um, D, uh, DeAsia Carrington. DeShanae Carrington, yeah. My apologies. Mm-hmm. Can no, you pronounce okay. that again? DeShanae. DeShanae Carrington. Mm-hmm. You have to battle with her. Yeah. So the the way you will come into the W is you you will have to fight and scrap for every every minute. Not saying any other player win. Right. But on that specific team, I think that's gonna bode well for her and for her being able to be a standout player in the W. Right. I wanna see DH Fair at Connecticut. Yeah. Okay. Great. You got anything else you wanna add? Nah, man, that's it. I I well let me just say this one more time. For the WNBA. You need this, especially this draft class, because you've dropped the get ball, it right. and nobody wants to say it out loud. But y'all need to keep these kids, these young ladies. Y'all need to draft them and stick with them, because they're going to bring the league over the top into what it is going to want, which y'all want it to be. Do not let, like, and another thing too, real quick. Now there's a shot. These old school coaches, they then they gotta go. If if you if you don't know how to coach a kid like that because their game is different and you can't figure it out, you need to retire and watch it from home. Because mm-hmm. I can tell you right now, and this is no shot at any of the coaches, but if I'm any franchise and I don't care, if I got Angel Reese, I'm going to tell you as the owner, you better make it work. Mm-hmm. If you can't make it work, I'm going to find somebody to come in here to make that work. That's this draft class. Yeah. And not saying and, it wasn't and, before. Andrew Cordoza, same thing. And not saying it wasn't before because mm-hmm. I thought it was draft class last year. There was a couple Dope. players that yeah. should still be on teams. Yes. Long are there the days. There was players from South Carolina that, that got cut, that had no business being cut. But go ahead. I'm sorry. No. Long are the days are we seeing these top draft picks who played great in college, who were part of either tournament runs or championship runs, get to the WNBA and get cut all because you don't got roster space. I said it earlier in the podcast. I'm going to say it again. The media got mad at Alexis Morris, who was from LSU, Ooh. when she made that comment about the league has to move beyond the older veteran players. She, weren't, she wasn't She was saying that every 30-year-old got to get out the league. She was saying, this is coming. Yeah. And everybody turned on her and tried to make it seem like she's crazy, but here we are. Long are the days of us seeing those top draft picks get drafted and y'all say we don't got space for them, and they need to go across seas for four years. No, that mm-hmm. <laughs> that player that's sitting yeah. on the bench, that's 34, 35, 36, mm-hmm. that's maybe giving you between two and six points, yeah. they might need to go across seas. That old school coach is saying, oh, well, this is the way I coach my team. As you said, if I'm drafting this player, you better make it work. Yeah, So figure it out. Facts. I, I, I make one more point. We saw it. Well, she's in Washington now, but somehow D.D. Richards didn't make the Liberty team. Yeah. It had amazed me how that happened. Doesn't make I, sense. I saw some players on there that had no business being on that court, but I ain't going to speak on that. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No. Nah. That's it. Um. Oh, let me let me end off like this. And I forgot to include this when I was um discussing hip-hop. When I was saying about the what was what was the point I'm making about the apology? This was the point, and I'm gonna end on this before we close okay. out. About hip hop being competitive, this is why the younger generation, even some of us old, older folks in hip hop, love battle rap. Mm-hmm. There's a bunch of battle rap, rap leagues. One in particular, RBE. Shout out to ARP who runs RBE Rare Breed Entertainment, who just had a dope event that he released. Mm-hmm. 
go to his channel, um, Rare Breed Entertainment on YouTube. Got some of the dopest battles in hip hop. That's why I, I don't like the apology. <laughs> That's why <laughs> yeah. I watch b- battle rap. So just oh, real God. quick, yeah. Shout out to ARP. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Rare Breed Entertainment and all the dope events that ARP pits on. Keep doing it because you are hip hop culture. All the artists that show up to your events and participate is hip hop culture. Mm-hmm. And y'all keeping it going. Salute the ARP. Salute the Rare Breed Entertainment. I'm gonna say salute the Verbal War Zone because they too. do it too. They do it big too. And I don't think they get enough recognition for how they were transcending the battle rap thing. Mm-hmm. So I salute to them. They don't get enough credibility. If you you can go on YouTube and definitely check their 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 material and all their all their stuff, everything, all their videos, all their battles. It's dope, man. You got to check it out. We got to get them up here too. I've been saying we were gonna do it, but for everything we were going through, just didn't happen. But it will. That's all I gotta say. Mm-hmm. So shout out to everybody tuning in, whether it's one person or whether it's a thousand people. We appreciate any form of support. Like I said, just in case TikTok gets banned, you can follow us over on YouTube at YouTube backslash NV online, E-N-V-E online, one word. Facts. Appreciate that everybody tuned in. Until next time, God bless. One.